I, I thought I pushed the button, but then I didn't. But then I did push the button. Hi, it's me, Scott. Um, it's been a minute. Took a few days. I definitely did play a lot of Satisfactory off stream, and I, uh, I apologize for that. For the millions of you that were really trying to follow along. Um, yeah, I, I went behind your back and I played Satisfactory for out without you, but let me just, let me try to catch you up on a few things. Some major works that have happened. One is I spent probably 10 plus hours getting nuclear power. Um, it took a long time. I built a whole new factory on a whole two, new part of the map, multiple huge factories, a treetop factory. Uh, it's very large to just supply the stuff needed for my uh, secret underground nuclear facility. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear. Um, and the reason for that is one, I just wanted more power because power is perpetually a problem and those give you some power for sure. And two, because this particle accelerator, which is required for one of the remaining uh, phase four devices that I need to address is so unstable. And over time requires between 500 and 1500 megawatts. And so it just needs a lot of power. Um, I also had to build a pretty substantial factory to supply it with copper. Sorry, that's probably pretty loud, huh? And uh, it was a whole thing. It was a whole absolute thing. And you'll notice I have two of these, and you'll notice one of them isn't, isn't turned on. It's because I don't actually have enough copper to power two. I had a copper surplus for a while, so I had them both going. Anyway, um, so this whole factory up here is paused at the moment because we have we have all the stuff. We have all, I forget which one it was. This was the generator mainly. I, I don't remember which, which is which. Anyway, this one is all done. You can see in the upper right corner, we have 4,000 out of 4,000. Actually happened faster than anticipated. Um, looks like we have a problem down here suddenly that we're gonna have to address that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, also the far away giant factory that was a major project last week. That prop factory was too efficient, and we also have a thousand of that. Oh, sorry, maybe that was the one that's four thousand. I get them backwards. Which one's which, actually? So this is the one we only needed a thousand of. So this one went relatively quickly. It had all that work over in the valley with heat sinks and whatnot. The one with four thousand, uh, that was this whole giant project over over yonder. I can't really see it here, but it was a whole standalone factory that we actually went by the books. We used that online tool to build and uh, it actually worked kind of too well. So th those two are done and now we're way behind on these other two. And the nuclear spaghetti, I can basically make like one half, one half per minute. I just got some uh, text spam. It's pretty rare for me. Are we making one a minute or one half a minute? It's not a very high throughput. Yeah, one half per minute. I mean, a thousand. So that's 2,000 minutes, and that's a while. It's better than that 4,000. So, and to up this, we'll have to double the copper and so on, you know. And this, yeah, you know, you know how it is. Um, that other thing, the advanced directive thing that we need 4,000 of, I, for better or worse, and looking at these numbers, we're going to say it's probably worse opted to try to do that with just like existing infrastructure to just kind of build on existing infrastructure to build that and uh, it's not going super well but it's okay i mean it's been fine but it's basically been like okay try to get these operating so these are at a hundred percent which is good these are at a hundred percent i've got three of them which isn't amazing so i'm only making four 4.25 per minute, which is not great, but they're working steadily and we're at 100% efficiency on that. So that that's that's fine. Um, it feels a little like that could stop any minute because I think my uh, those our little oscillator friends we're still at 100% efficiency on those, but I think I think we're actually dropping in efficiency and we just hadn't aren't hitting it yet. Um, because I started an alternate supercomputer factory 
that uses radio oscillators, thinking that would be better. And, uh, maybe that was unwise. Maybe it was unwise. In fact, is that one turned on? Do we have two super computer, computer factories going? Anyway, now we're eating up our oscillators faster, which is eating up wire, which is causing, I don't know, there was a slowdown somewhere else because we were short on wire. Uh, we are making supercomputers over here, so there is actually no reason for me to be making supercomputers super up here. I thought I wanted to just because I got a new supercomputer recipe. So another thing I did since last we spoke was I went all over the map getting recipes because it really felt like... Uh... What is that? Oh, fun. These are all supercomputers I'm not actually using because I forgot to hook them up. Okay. Is this my latest save? Sometimes I feel like my last save vanishes and I'm actually at a not most recent save. But I'm probably just being paranoid. Okay, I think we want to go over here. And I think we want to say... Let's not do this supercomputer. I'm glad we can, and maybe we'll reconsider that later, but for now, let's not do it. And over here, let's make sure this is, we wanna be on standby here. So this is a worry, because we are still very dependent on these crystal oscillators, and now our throughput is, is down because of wire, of all things. Um, I did, I think I swapped a recipe for something over here to make it use wire instead of something else, but well, in fact, I changed the recipe to not use wire over there for something, so I'm actually a little confused. No, that's not true. I did change something. I changed some manufacturers that need quite a bit of wire. And so this was our previous little wire hub. Um, I altered it to make a ton of... No, I thought the manufacturers stopped taking wire and started taking... I'm sorry, cable, and started taking copper wire because we didn't actually need... Like, do I just have a bunch of copper? Yeah, I have a bunch of... So I have a whole factory of cable here that I don't need. And yet, across the street, I am hurting for cable. So what can we do about that? I think the trick is going to be... I mean, and honestly, we're probably just... Totally full on cable over here. Yeah, so... Okay, this take cable... Okay, there's a few things here, in fact, actually. Um, so we have a whole uh, cable factory over here that we're not using at all. I think. I think not even, like, not even a little bit. Where does this other thing go? Just nowhere? So, that was an inn. I guess at some point I had cable coming from somewhere else. Um, this is a merger. So that's just going in here. So this cable... Oh, we... Ah, uh, shoot. We actually did want that. That was a... That was a useful thing. I also had cable coming in from a hidden uh, cache of cable, but it seems like we burned through that. So let's get rid of that for now. Um, okay. So actually we did want this... Okay, but none of this cable is being used. This cable is just dead ending right here. And then we have so much cable here that is, I mean, it's an okay flow. So I think what we actually probably want to do is um, let's try to get this cable doing something. Somehow. Maybe like that. That's probably not going to be pretty. Ah, that'll do. Okay. That'll give us an obscene amount of cable coming in here. So we just want to make sure we have an outrageous amount of cable coming in. That means we don't actually need this cable anymore. I don't think. I think we have more than enough cable over here. So... I think, right? Is that true? I don't understand this gap here. That's a little confusing. I don't really know where this cable is even going. Okay, it's slowly going in there. 
Okay, it looks like there's a... something's broken. So let's call that good, and then maybe if we don't have this cable coming over here, then our little sub cable factory will be good enough. And that means all of this cable can now go to the crystal oscillators, which feels like it should be. An, I mean, I feel like we were always had a surplus of cable here. So, okay, we are short on wire somehow? How could we possibly be short on wire with this much wire being produced? How much wire do these use? They use 60 per minute. So how how is it possible that we would ever not have enough wire? just not fill fast enough? Should we upgrade these? How can I have that many wire factories and have what seems like so little going here? So we're still like draining a buffer here, so that's bad. So because I doubled this wire capacity yesterday or the day before. I did get some new wire recipes that I was considering switching to. Um, I mean, this one is pretty crazy. It's 120 per minute, but we have to have uh, whatever it is, Caterium. And there's none near nearby, even though I thought there was. I thought there was some not crazy far away, but... So, oops. And we're making it in some places with this. We're using both of these recipes. We're not using these at all because we just don't have any Caterium around here. But this 120 minute would be great if we had some. Um, but it's, it is only quite far. I still don't actually understand how this is even possible. So we're using 60... So we're using 240 wire per minute just for that. But we're making two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 240. We should be making 240 wire. So I don't really understand I mean, these are still filling up, or that first one is still filling up, even though that doesn't really make sense to me. Let's just try this and see if we can get these to fill up. Because there's really no reason. If we're only using... Let me make sure... Is my math totally wrong? 6 times 4 should be 240. But this is essentially 3 times 16... Right? Which is 6 times 8, which is 480. So, what's... What's wrong? I mean, I, just for kicks, let's upgrade the speed of everything, I guess. Because we really do want whatever, whatever speed we can get away with here. And these don't seem to be underperforming. Well, 99, maybe they technically are. Maybe we need to, uh, uh oh, I'm gonna run out of aluminum, probably. Maybe we can, maybe we have enough to do this since it's just kind of one piece at a time, two pieces at a time. No one's in chat right now to verify. Okay, microphone's working, all that stuff. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you mess up I'm on the right camera. But still, this doesn't feel 
I mean, the idea here was that I would have a surplus of 240 wire per minute, which I think is actually still not enough. And that, I mean, 240 wire free and clear of what's going on with the cable. But it looks like there's something I'm not considering. Nothing's overclocked. We're using 60 per minute. That's 240. These are all operating 100. I just, I don't, I don't understand. We should still have 240 a minute coming through here. I mean, maybe that is 240 minute and it's just so fast, but it doesn't really seem like it. We're definitely draining this buffer. Um, I really thought there was some caterium or whatever over here. I should actually check crashes over here, but I because I probably checked them early in the game, but I may not have had whatever was required to unlock them. So yeah, I don't know. This just doesn't feel right. We're at least improving on efficiency here. Let's at least upgrade these to Mark III, just to get the cable out of there. Because that is also a problem, because really we need to be making more cable. Which is a bummer, because we are so... In fact, let's just do this. This is the thing to do. Uh-oh, uh, okay. Because we have such an embarrassment of cable here. So... We should just... Use it. This is, I mean, I, this is not a bad idea because otherwise we're just sort of wasting it, but it's, it's maybe not the best idea. So this is the splitter, let's change this to a merger. It's just, once you, once you do this and you sort of cross tangle, or this is what I've been finding at least, where you really kind of cross your wires, sort of almost literally, it becomes easy to it's just harder to make sure the math is right, like to make sure everything is getting what it needs. That's why these last couple big factories, I've tried to basically set up fully in isolation. So it's very easy to manage the resources. And then maybe they have a handful of resources that come in, but that was not right at all. But in general, Yeah, aside from a... What? Did I do this backwards? That is supposed to be a merger. Oh, yeah, I did, I did it completely wrong. We want that. I hate you. Why do you do this? This happened to me yesterday on the same thing, where they're clearly aligned. Like, they're unquestionably aligned. This is annoying too. I hate the jetpack. I'm right by stuff. Let me fly. Just let me fly. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything, game. It doesn't cost you anything to just let me fly. I'm 150 hours into this game. I feel like I should just be able to fly. Maybe I should just always be using the power jet or the fuel jetpack. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do, but just pretty annoying. Okay, is there anything even in here? A handful of wire, but I'm going to say we don't really need this. Okay, let's say we're going to merge this. You can come here. Maybe I'll regret this, but I feel like we have wire buffered elsewhere, so. 
I'm sorry, cable buffered elsewhere. Okay. Yeah, I'm still... Maybe we are. If we are actually getting the throughput and we just we just really need even more wire than this. Which is a bummer. And this I really thought there was some over here, but I guess not. Okay, well, so at least now we're using cable that we weren't using before. So that's where we're, our main mine is over there. There's just none over here. It's really far away. Maybe I'm thinking of this one. That's not too far from the train station. We could put it on a train. Could we put it on the train? I don't think so. I, don't, I mean, we could, if we added another car, we could. But I think as the train is currently configured, we cannot use the Lee. Uh, on the train and wire is such a high throughput thing i don't know this doesn't quite feel like the thing to do um it does feel like we're having issues though so those that stuff over there is it yellow or green kind of hard to say from here anyway the thing that i most i mean as long as these automated systems it's slow or whatever they called the director systems whatever they're called as long as they're okay we're okay for now but that wire and cable affects those things down the chain. So I am I am concerned. So let's have to keep an eye on those things. And then nuclear pasta is just going to take forever unless we go make another gigantically huge copper factory. Which maybe we will, but just that copper factory is so huge that it takes a megawatt. I'm sorry, a thousand, a gigawatt a power just to run the factory for the thing that then also takes up to 1.5 megawatts it's just okay so we got lots of christmas stuff going on so the actual thing i wanted to do today because that stuff is going you know i think it's not perfect probably for the advanced director thing i also should have started from scratch somewhere but i don't know i kind of started from scratch on the two other on two of the other factories. And certainly the nuclear thing was a total scratch job, but um, I guess I just, it was sort of the first one I did and it seemed obvious to just build directly on top of what we already had, but maybe it wasn't obvious. Had I been more robust about phase three or like more considerate about phase three and had more robust production, I think it would have been easier. But anyway, we're gonna ignore all that because I want to just build this Christmas town. So we've got a goofball holiday event, and I'm to the last phase of that goofball holiday event that, uh, unsurprisingly, requires a not, not insubstantial production pipeline to make these Christmas stars that we need. So I was kind of thinking... We just do it. Just do the Christmas stars. Oops. And so this time, I did the numbers that seemed like the numbers to do. Like, I just figured out the math. Um, I definitely wanted to just cheat and use the holiday, the that factory calculator, but it didn't have all the Christmasness in it. So, but let's just work backwards because I think we can figure this out. And somewhere I made, I did make a text document of, uh, this was my little, I'm, I'm sure there's mistakes here that hopefully we'll figure out, but we'll work backwards through it. So it's like, you need four constructors to make the candy canes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we'll just figure those things out. Candy canes are totally kind of work in isolation. 
So that's stuff we can just have the candy canes going. And then some stuff, yeah, some stuff's going to get cricket, tricky because we need a lot more trees and we may not have the stuff to make the trees and so on and so forth. But we'll try it. Now the, the decorations pipeline is what is complicated. So this is pretty easy. So it's really just four constructors. Really just four constructors to make the candy canes. So now what does that look like? I want to be sure I think we go off in this direction with the candy canes because you don't even have room in this direction for the other stuff. So I would I think that That would be candy canes, but we don't want to interfere here. So really we want maybe a constructor. There's a constructor here and its output is going to go into here. And then there's going to be a merger. So yeah, is that, is that enough room? I think it is. So what I'm imagining is probably, or we go the opposite way, but I think we go, I think we go this way. Out this way. And when then we just run the trees down the middle. So this can be a pretty simple. Ah, uh, well, we probably actually do. Just to come around the corner for these. Okay, so these want splitters. And they want... So where do we want the mergers? I was thinking of this... And it's really more mergers than we need, but they're not expensive, so. Something like that, and then Okay, and then these all get candy caned. Should have checked the math on this, but we'll, we'll check it a piece at a time. So candy canes, we get five per minute. So this will give us 20 per minute. And we want 20 per minute. So I think we're good. And then the issue is that these each want 15. So that's one tree each. So we need four trees to do this. So um, what do we need to make a tree? Oops. Oh, let's just do the thing. And I don't like the footprint of a tree. I think trees will fit on one square. So we'll leave this factory as is so it can just keep working. This was just my like ad hoc victory. I kept building onto as we went, but okay. So there's all our branches. Christmas gifts, I think we probably have a lot, yeah. Um, and we need 80 copper and 80 iron, which I am a little worried about that. Uh, because I literally have no copper. 
How's that possible? Is that really true? No, there they are. Okay. Whew. Okay, that gets us our fur trees. I do fear we're going to run out of trees as we go, but... We can steal... Steal parts as needed, I guess. Come on, come on, you can fly. You can fly! Okay, let's just put a fire pole up here. I can go to you as well. And. Okay. So you're all good. How many Christmas crests do we need? I need 200. Um, what do I have so much of? Just too, too much stuff. But some of it's good stuff. Let's get you some... Get you started. How many do we need? We need 200, so... Go two nuts. Okay, so now our four trees. Yeah, I think. Let's give ourselves a little room to grow, but I don't think there's really any reason to, because I think when we're done with this, we're done with this. Like, Okay, is it true that you will fit on a single square? I think it is. There's something wrong with the snapping of Christmas trees, but... It's easy enough to just manually align them. Christmas trees don't need power, which is nice. So we just need a couple mergers and a call it a day. Uh oh, did these backwards. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I do that frequently. The visual cues. Are not terrible, but they're not good. I think the biggest problem is that the, everything is a blue highlight while you're building it, and the outflow is also blue. So, the it's sometimes a little hard to tell what's going on. Shoot, those are splitters, not mergers. That's the other thing I do perpetually: is mix up splitters and mergers. Okay, this is this right this time? Maybe. Okay, hopefully that is 100% of our candy cane related requirements. I feel compelled to just put a thing here just to just to make it slightly more symmetrical. Okay, right? So are we good on candy canes? So wreaths are a bit more annoying because we need two and a half Symbolers. Let's see if that's actually true. So I believe we need five wreaths per minute, but I think they only produce, I think assemblers only produce two wreaths per minute. So I think we need two and a half to so three. We need three. One might say, one might call it three. So, I don't know if there's a real advantage to a double side if we're going to have three coming out. So, what I think I'll say is... I think we just have three in a row and then kind of merge them together. And assemblers are annoyingly, I think, designed such that three of them won't just fit on a square of three. I think they're slightly wider than that, but maybe you can fudge it. I, I can't remember. Let's just... Oh boy, just let me fly, let me fly, let me fly, please just let me fly. So little to ask. I have a jetpack on, just let me fly. Okay, so... 
right? Like if I do this, then these are not gonna go. Pretty annoying. I mean, we could just, you know, do one of these things and do one of these things and then delete the slight overhang after the fact because who actually cares? Okay, maybe that was a little more than slight. Okay, so these, these three, we three, we three assemblers of Orient are going to make uh, wreaths. AKA Fixmas decorations. And these will have two major kind of points of ingress. So, um, the way I think I want to do this is the simplest way, if we have room, is to have two splitters here as far back as we can on. Maybe that's still okay. That might not be good enough, but let's see. Okay, it's good enough. Okie dokie, did we say what we wanted? Yes, we did. So, 15 per minute for tree branches. Which I think is pretty easy, right? Okay, but we have three, right? And one of these is only going to be at half capacity. Okay. So say that it doesn't really matter, but this one is only going to produce one per minute. So then it will only need 7.5. So it'll be 37.5. And to produce 37.5 branches, we need four constructors, basically. And then three trees from that. So we need four constructors again. So it'll be very similar to this, this layout. But where do we want that layout to be? Maybe centered here. It's really not ideal. Maybe I should have bumped this all over a little more. We could also do a line of constructors, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. In this case, what I probably should have done is done a line and just had trees feeding into them individually. So just going across. Because it is one to one in that case. In this case, it is not one to one. Because it is four constructors and three trees. So. I mean, we still could do it on a line. It's just a line of seven, which is a little annoying. I mean, it'd be a line of four constructors and then the trees after that and the trees feed along, but it does make things a little more compact if we do it that way. And that could be a merger. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say let's do it like that, just so it's, because I really should have moved this whole thing over one, but whatever. So it'll be one, two, three, three, four constructors, and one, two, three trees. Two, four constructors. And then these will just merge basically like this. So, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I could be doing things on multiple levels, but as we have discussed, uh, I seem to be incapable of my brain just doesn't want to. Okay, so the idea here is that these will just all spit out and they'll all merge together. Yeah. And they'll just eat off the same conveyor and that's all fine. And then... Good grief, just let me fly. I hate it. Just let me fly. I'm close to things. 
I see the things, they're just right here. I see them. I just want to fly. That's all. Okay, so actually we probably should just... This isn't the worst layout. It's not good, but it's not offensively bad, let's say. So we really just need three trees here, right? And then one of these, which really only 2.5 trees, which is funny because I don't think you can fit configure the output on trees, which is three trees. One of these is going to be at 0.75. So let's just call it this one. So what are we producing here? Three branches. And one is only going to be at 75%. And we'll just be a little backed up on gifts here, but whatever. It's fine. Okay, then... Yeah, three trees. Is that what I said? Yeah, 2.5 trees. Okay, so we need more gifts, I need some branches, etc, etc. We've got a whole lot of gifts. I think we got a whole lot of branches too. Okay. It's also, I mean, the... <laughs> I like to lay things out like this now with very specific throughput calculations, but it also is uh, a little bit of insurance in case I do screw up. So always kind of building any any piece of this with at least some room to come back and add more if needed. If I do screw it up, like I could add symmetrical for, for at least these two constructors and add more trees on the other side or whatever. Uh, so let's get... We need mergers first, so three mergers. Oh, backwards already. Really just two mergers first, because that other one can just feed into that one. And then, same thing, really. I never do this, but we guess we don't need an, a splitter on the end. But that's fine. Excuse me? Oh. Okay. There's those three. Hopefully that makes you happy. And then we want a... Hmm. This merger can just dump right into the bottom of that, and that'll be fine. And then we just need a merger going this way. Okay. That gets us our trees, hopefully. Hopefully I did that right. Um, and let's just... Well, this isn't the prettiest way to do this, but we'll just have a single merger, and then it can kind of squirrel over there. Okay, hopefully that's good for trees. for these, and then the tree branches. Yeah. Okay, so now the ornaments, and this is where it's a real pain in the butt. So we will need three more assemblers. And then those three assemblers have their whole business that they have foundries and smelters. So, kind of think that I want to build those off that away. 
out yonder just to make sure we have room because these are going to fan out pretty heavily I think and they can just so let's say we'll do it like this I delete the assembler that I was in the process of assembling. That was not part of the plan. Delete that and that. Okay, and then the idea will be we just merge these, the three of these here, and then this goes up here. are for ornaments, right? Ornament bundles. Okie dokie. So, we have those, and that seems okay. And now we need ornaments get copper, and they get iron. So we want, and they have three foundries each. And each foundry gets red ornaments and it also gets copper slash iron, but I didn't factor that in. Draclin, how's it going? So I think the way we want to do this is let's just set a run off this way. That'll be one side of the three foundries and we can just fan off in both directions we're building a christmas a cr cr christmas faster i almost said a croissant or chris 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 christopherson i took myself down to the tally ho tavern to buy me a bottle of beer and i sat me down by a tender young maiden whose eyes were as dark as her hair. So, according to this, we need six foundries. And as I was searching from bottle to bottle for something unfoolish to say, the silver-tongued devil, he slipped up behind me, and smiling, he stole her away. I said, hey, don't you know, he's the devil. He's everything that I ain't. Hiding intentions of evil under the smile of a saint. All these good fours getting in trouble, shifting his share of the blame. Some people swear he's my double. Some even say we're the same. That's my favorite Chris Christopherson song. Pretty good. My whole life, I never liked the song Me and Bobby McGee very much. I never was super into Chris Christopherson, and I think this is the issue. One, I feel like the song I was always presented as kind of the canonical Chris Christopherson song is Sunday Morning Coming Down. And the version I always heard of that growing up was the Johnny Cash version. It was kind of my least favorite. It's just so, like, a melodic sort of. I don't even know how to describe it exactly. Um, but I never liked that song. And I never liked me and Bobby McGee just because I never really liked Janis Joplin. So I'm sure some people will find that upsetting. But I've just never been super into Janis, Janis Joplin's singing style. Um, but then recently I was, was like figured I should give it, you know, try a little harder. Give it a little more of a chance after a lifetime of just not quite getting Chris Christopherson. And somehow, Silver Tongue Devil just really 
really clicked. It's a good song. Uh, and even more so, his version of me and Bobby McGee is great. It's great. My favorite part about it is the recording that I have. I don't know if it's which recording it is, actually, or where where, where it all comes from in, in the history of the world. But um, he has this, this song opens with him saying, if it sounds country, it's because it is. It's a country and western song. Just a pretty good thing to say. Okay, we got rotors, we need modular frames. But yeah, Silver Tongue Devil. Good song. And uh Well, shucks. Okay, we may have some down here. And Chris Christopherson's version. Me and Bobby McGee. Good song. Jacqueline has every little thing. Ooh, there's not. There's not any in here. I thought what I thought was wrong. I thought we may have... Wow, are we really... Is our modular frame situation so dire? Okay, I happen to know where there are a billion modular frames. It'll take up a moment to fly over there. I think... That's a concern, actually. So now we're... Oh, boy. What is even using our heavy frames now? I guess we're still shipping them... Yeah, okay. That's that's part of the code and trains. How are trains going? Do you like the song, The Coding Train? Get on the coding train. Coding train. Coding train. Um, this should have a merger. Right? That's what we meant. That was the intention here. Do you, do you want me to sing you more country songs to put you to sleep? What's a good country song to sing you? What's the best country song? Hmm. I'm trying to just like feel what bubbles out of me when I think of what's the best country song. I don't know. I messed up and I started thinking about it. I wanted to see what, like, what my my what my heart would respond with, but then I accidentally started to. Uh... Closing time. <laughs> well, I was singing um, binary. How are you? The uh, uh, the coding train, the Dan Schiffman show, his theme song, Coding Train. But yes, you could sing it to closing time. Coding train. Okay, yes, we have an embarrassment of modular frames here. We have a, it's a it's a joke how many modular frames we have here. It's it's sickening. This glut. This glut of modular frames. Though making you say, I mean, yeah, I guess what's the best country and western song? It's easy to pick a classic Willie Nelson song. Not a lot of people know this, and it's crazy to think about, because Willie Nelson is still making music, but Willie Nelson, I mean, plenty of people know it, but I don't think a lot of people really think about it, that Willie Nelson wrote Crazy, the Patsy Cline hit of the 1950s? Maybe it was early 60s, but Willie Nelson wrote that song. Willie Nelson wrote Farron, Farron Young's? Like, Hello Walls. It's pretty wild. It is going to be, I don't know. I think a lot about how after a a legendary musician dies what how the world responds to it like when prince died or david, david bowie died like a legendary musician but like willie who no like willie's career it's, it's, it's just astounding jolene is a good song i don't i i would not i think there's actually i will say this i don't Jolene is not in my ten, top 10 country Western songs. Probably not my top 100. And actually, the, I think the main reason I don't like it is it's so passive. Because I think um, I actually have a fondness for, like, especially for, for women country singers, uh, for fiery, for fieriness or, or non-passiveness, non-submissiveness. And so 
the song that immediately came to mind as my counter to Jolene, where Dolly Parton is begging Jolene, please don't steal my man, is Loretta Lynn singing Fist City, where a woman like just talks to her man and she's like, I'm going to take you to Fist City. That is a great song. Fist City, Fist City is better than Jolene. I'll say it right now. Jolene's a good song. The vocal performance of Jolene is so good that it like makes up for how the song itself is not that good. I mean, just, yeah, like begging someone to not steal your man, like it's not, it's, it's not a good, the story of the song is not good. The performance of it, of course, flawless. However, Fist City, Fist City is a perfect, it, it's just the right story. It's just the right performance. Um, beautiful. 10 out of 10. Loretta Lynn, Fist City. Uh, Loretta Lynn, not super well known for that. Loretta Lynn, Loretta Lynn also amazing in the longevity, longevity of her career. Um, starting with as a coal miner's daughter and then doing that album with Jack White. I mean, even that's been 10 years ago now, but that was pretty good. You've been bragging around this town. You've been loving my man. But the man I love, when he picks up trash, he puts it in a garbage can. And that's what you look like to me. And what I've seen, it's a pity. You better close your face and get out of my way if you don't want to go to Fist City. That's a good song. I don't know if she wrote that song, actually. I don't know who wrote Fist City, but it was a clearly a poet. <laughs> those, those, are the, those are the words of a... The, the person who wrote... When the man I love, when he picks up trash, he puts it in the garbage can. Ooh, that's a that's that's the heart of a poet right there. Um. Also, Jolene, the legend is that Dolly Parton wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You on the same day. I was like, I will always love you is is top tier. My favorite Dolly song is a ridiculous song from like a 90s era that I don't think people think of. Is that my favorite Dolly song? What's my favorite Dolly Parton song? I think it might be. There's a song called uh, Why'd You Come In Here Looking Like That? It's pretty good. I mean, it's like mid-period Dolly. I guess her career's been so staggeringly long, but... Uh... I mean, I, I, I Will Always Love You is just a, is an all-time, that is an all-time triumph of, of a song, but. It's my favorite Dolly song. It might be Why'd You Come In Here, which is maybe a little embarrassing, because I don't think that's a, I, well, okay, actually, my favorite just, song of Dolly Parton's to listen to is her duet with Kenny Rogers for uh, Islands in the Stream because that is a, that is an all time that is an all time song that is an all time duo an all time performance Un untouchable those two Islands in the Stream that is what we are oof good song good chills just, just thinking about it there's a like live performance maybe from the Country Music Awards in the 80s? I don't remember exactly when it was or where it was, but the live performance of that song? Ooh. What did we say? Three foundries each? And we rely on each other. Uh-huh. And Dolly's just like like Kenny Rogers is great, but I mean honestly Dolly's kind of running circles around him in a good way. Like she's 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 styling. She's stunt she's stunting a little bit, you might say. Um but in a very playful way. Not not a not a I'm 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 here to show you up kind of way, but it's just like I'm an all-time great and I'm just I'm going to come out here and effortlessly uh stunt on this song a little bit and it's great. Ooh, it's a good one. But if I was on a desert island and I could only choose one country and western song, what would it be? That's a tough one. Hmm. I 
it's just there's too many it's just so hard like what era do you pick but it's just where does one begin so we have kind of a problem here because really we want to i wonder if i can get away with this if i can get away with this or is it going to complain No, we don't, because we're just going to split from here straight, because this is... Right, I almost forgot what I was doing for a second. One of these is copper and one is iron. Man! Okay, let's just um, bump it further away. The, the, the fussiness of conveyor belts in this game drives me a little nuts. Excuse me? Did I do this wrong? Yes, I did. That was supposed to be a merger. I do this all the time. I, I don't know what I wish. If that, like, splitters and mergers work a little differently, or actually what I would like is if they were one device and you could just flip the functionality. I think that is the thing I actually want. Because they just look so similar. Subtle distinction. Where's too steep? I hate you. I hate. I might hate this game. Like the that's just not fun. It's just irritating. Especially, it's annoying for this asymmetrical stuff. Like now, this is gonna complain probably. Okay, we actually got away with it. What a shock. Okay. So let's try... Maybe just that. Just let me fly. It's also just like the whole category of, category of like cowboy songs. Like it's a it's a bit distinct. I mean that's more like Western music, but like very specifically, like old cowboy yodeling songs, like uh, Eddie Arnold maybe Cattle Call. It's a good one. I won't even. Ooh. I probably should not even try to yodel, because uh, you kind of can't yodel quietly. The thing about yodeling, you gotta raise your voice. You probably annoy my neighbors enough as it is. Without yodeling in my apartment, but Cattle Call's a good song. Slim Slim Whitman, Indian Loves Indian Love Call. That's the song that they use in Mars Attacks to blow up the aliens' heads. That's a good one. That's that's a again, choice. Choice. Okay, so these are three and three, and they take iron so we might just do the stack thing. If we can get away with it. Let's try it, I guess. Let's try to get as far away as we can. I sort of am feeling like it's not going to work, but let's see what happens. Okay, so far so good. Oops. I guess those could be Mark ones. Or why not? Okay. That'll do, so that's gonna be, I already forgot which is which, but whatever. One of them's gonna be copper, and one of them's gonna be iron. So we have this big path of uh, copper and iron down here that we'll just siphon off of. 
I built an underground train, Draclan. I have a subterranean train. A subterrain. A subterrain train. How far back did I go? Like, I, I'm hanging off the edge over here. So I should probably do that just to be safe. Uh, do it wrong every time. Maybe I should, I don't know, should I just reverse my shortcuts? Because it seems like I get wrong. I get it wrong more than 50% of the time. And if I reverse my shortcuts, then it would be... It would even out somehow. I mean, in uh, in Portland, we have the the Max and the streetcar, and people and people from out of town don't know what to call them, and I don't blame them because because we also in like the same part those the Max and the streetcar and the actual Amtrak train like all converge in the Pearl, and so there's even signs in Portland that are kind of funny. There's these, they're kind of cool actually. There are these big signs that are just talk about using public transportation. Um, like go by train, go by streetcar. Um, but I don't know what they call, let's see. Like near the Amtrak station, there's this big go by train sign. So it says go by train at Union Station. And then at the streetcar, um, I guess, is not too far. So it's go by streetcar. But then there's the max, and I don't know what they call that. Like this is not, this is Portland city trains, but this isn't the train. This is the max. Um, so I don't know, the naming here is very confused. Seattle's sort of weird too. I don't know, what is it called in Seattle? I think in every city I've lived in, it's been called a different thing, basically. Um, oh yeah, the, it's it's called the 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 light the light rail, I guess, link light rail. The funniest thing about um, the Sound Transit link light rail, yeah, the link light rail. But the very first when it, very first, when I was still going lived there in undergrad, that station went almost nowhere, and it was so it it only really. Um, went in a part of town called South Lake Union. So people called it the South Lake Union tram or South Lake Union transit or whatever it was. But the ac then the acronym is SLUT. So there were all of these uh, Seattle SLUT shirts because of South Lake Union transit. Um, and oh, same thing when I lived in LA, that was a long time ago. That was like 20 years ago and they were just starting, but I think we called it the, we just called it the train in LA. I think at the time, even though no one took it. I don't know if it's, I don't really know the current state of it. I think it at least goes places now. Here we say, take the max or take the streetcar in Portland. I feel like in Chicago, we said, take the train. Did people say, take the L? I guess we said, take the L. And then New York was take the train or take the subway. But train could mean a lot of things. Cause you might, you know, if you're going to New Jersey, or the Amtrak or whatever. Take the T. Yeah. Seattle was weird too, because there was a time before the Link Light where it really went anywhere, the trains would, I'm sorry, the buses, in certain parts of town they could go electric and they would just like hook up to the wires, but there's a was a part of town where they'd go subterranean. So even before there was like an underground rail system widely used in Seattle, there were bus tunnels. So you could like, you could take the subway, but be on a bus, sort of. It's not... No one really called it that, but that was kind of the, kind of the idea, I think. What do people call it? In... Right. The T. 
Yeah, actually, that's what I remember in Boston. I haven't spent a ton of time in Boston, but I would, when I would spend time there, I feel like people almost exclusively turn refer to the trains by the color. At least, I mean, I would again very small small Boston experience, so I can't speak to it that much. But I feel like people would say. Um, Like my friends were in Cambridge and they would say, take the green line or something. Is that right? I think, yeah. We do that here somewhat. Like I live near the red line and the blue line and the red line will get you to the airport. The yellow line goes to a certain part of town. Like the max here isn't bad. It's not, it's not bad. It's okay. It's very much that kind of spoke thing though. I, that was the thing that always drove me. Uh, I, drove me crazy about Brooklyn, which makes total sense, but the rail system in Brooklyn is really kind of designed like this. And it's all about how do you get to Manhattan? And so very frequently, in my experience, when I lived in Brooklyn, it was like, okay, if you're trying to get into Manhattan from Brooklyn, it doesn't matter where you are. You're probably close to one of the main, uh, main lines. I lived near the F train for a while, near the G train for a while, and actually they both went to the same stop. But, the, but you could take any of those and they would get you into Manhattan. The problem was if you were here and you wanted to get here, like the inner Brooklyn trains, at least for where I ever wanted to go, were kind of terrible. So, so frequently, yeah, so frequently you would have to go, it was faster in some cases to just go into the city and come back to get it to another part of Brooklyn. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, it just, I didn't have that much reason to go point to point in Brooklyn because I was usually going to NYU, uh, both when there for like working, doing research and when a student, of course. And so, but just those times would happen where it's like, oh man, I'm in Brooklyn. Like I'm in Brooklyn. I feel like I should be able to get to another place that is in Brooklyn, but no, you can't. Okay, so now the thing we need, so we have these three foundries. We'll get metal up here later. Yeah, you go into the city. It's true, it's true. I'm trying to think of what, where else? Minneapolis, I don't even remember. I didn't live there for very long, but I f my whole memory of Minneapolis was just all buses. Um, Austin was all buses. LA was buses. There was that, yeah. Whatever they called it, the train there. Um, Portland, I pretty much walk everywhere. It, it, like unless I'm going to the airport, I pretty much walk everywhere. Um, nowhere in the, like the middle of the country has a rail system, really. I mean, except for, of course, literal trains with cows on them. Uh, okay, we're getting sidetracked here. What are we trying to do? We have... Uh... I miss New York sometimes. I know that it's not a place that humans should live. Oh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh does have kind of a rail system. It just feels like it doesn't go anywhere. I guess if you were a person... They do have kind of a cool sort of like bus thoroughfare. I forgot what it's called, but almost like a dedicated bus highway. Um, but, and then they do have a rail system. That's name is escaping me, but it, 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 it was very spooky, like to bring people suburbs in and it feels like it didn't go anywhere. So yeah, it was more like, I guess to funnel people in and out of the city. I don't know, Draculin, we never decided. What is the number one country? Let's just see. I'm going to look at a list just as a starting point and tell you how terrible it is. Because I'm going to just, I know this list is going to be bad. It doesn't even matter what list we pick. We'll go through Rolling Stone and I'll just respond to the top 10. We'll see. Number 100. So I can already tell this song is bad because it, there basically hasn't been any good country music since 
we'll say 1990. As a general rule. So that one's out of the off the charts. I'm actually, I don't know that song. Convoy, Convoy's a good song. Um, C.W. McCall has some other good songs. He's actually really interesting. He's got a song that's way better than Convoy. I wonder if it'll appear on the list. This is the one everybody knows, but he has a song called When You're Hot, You're Hot that is like a very interesting kind of country, like soul synthesis. He's from the South. I can't remember exactly where, but he had like a really interesting kind of, um, yeah, I, I guess country funk, country soul. Um, this can't be good. Ronnie Millsap, I, I, this song doesn't come to mind immediately, but Ronnie Millsap's not my favorite. Bellamy Brothers are okay. That song doesn't really ring a bell for me, though. Dwight Yoakam is very good. I, I, I think Dwight Yoakam was, like, among the last good country stars. He's very much in that, like, Bakersfield, uh, Buck Owens mold. I don't know this song either. Queen Hearts. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of ways, it's not exactly his fault, but Garth Brooks really was, like, on the last... The la Country kind of died with Garth Brooks. I don't think he was bad, necessarily, and he has some good songs, but I think he, like... I don't know. There's an inflection point around Garth Brooks, and then country music has been basically terrible since. Um, <laughs> Gary Stewart. Jerry Jeff. Sure. I love it. Uh, that song doesn't ring a bell. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll breeze through these so we can get to the top. Um, kind of a surprising amount of 70s on this. I don't know, Streets of Baltimore. Reba, fancy, not, Reba's okay. I don't know that song. Almost any song post-2000, I'm not gonna know. More Garth Brooks. King of the Road, I actually might put in one of my top ten. If I just open my mouth and sing sometimes, there's probably a good 25% chance it's going to be King of the Road. That is a great song. That's great. King of the Road is probably in my top ten. Um, maybe not... It's probably in my top ten country songs. It's definitely my number one, uh, like... Okay, it's tied for first place of my, like... Uh, I don't know the right word to use for this, but we'll call it, like vintage hobo music along with uh big rock candy mountain can we just stop popping up giant what is this this isn't look at this website how much ad was that website uh 2008 no thanks charlie rich is okay that song is okay i mean other, a lot of the 70s music a lot of 70s country music there's a lot of good outlaw 70s country music, but a lot of the, like, I don't even know what to call it, mainstreamish country music was very much the same kind of, like, I don't know, soft rock kind of, uh, yeah, just kind of the same soft rock that was happening in other genres. I don't know this song at all. This is a French, oh, cool, Cajun. Alabama's pretty good. Alabama's all right. I don't know this song. That's okay. I, I, uh, I'm I not the biggest time Tammy Wynette song. This song's okay. It's about, like, you're getting divorced and you don't want to say the word in front of your kids, so you're spelling it. Like, it's okay. Um, I don't know that song. I mean, anything by Loretta Lynn is great, but Fist City. Um, Mosin Cash. This one, that's actually shocking to have this one. This one, this is a really interesting song, actually, because this is a song that was almost, like, weirdly is both, like, a conservative anthem and a progressive anthem. And for Merle Haggard in his lifetime, I think it shifted. But it's really interesting, like, because I think it was kind of written in earnest, this very, like, jingoistic American, like, this is these are hardcore American values, and for that reason, it is very much a like kind of conservative anthem. But as he especially became very, uh, 
as as he as he as he got way into uh, counterculture himself later in life, it became a counterculture anthem. It's a good song. It's a it's not my favorite Merle Haggard song, um, but it's a pretty good one. Best Merle Haggard song is is Mama Tried. That's Merle Haggard, right? Mama Tried is probably in my top five country songs. Are you asking if I'm sober? Yes. Do I seem not sober because I'm thinking about country music? Mama Tried is great. Mama Tried. Mama, Mama Tried is on. There's certain days of the week I might tell you that's the best country song of all time. I mean, because especially according to the uh, the uh, David Allen Cole metric for what makes the best country song, which is like. It's got to have prison and mama and trains and getting drunk. It's got a lot of those things in there. I turned 21 in prison doing life without parole. No one could steer me right, but mama tried, mama tried, mama tried to raise me better, but her plea denied, denied. That leaves only me to blame, because mama tried. It's a great song. Um, I've all the pieces. Every Patsy Cline song is masterpiece. I like George Jones. I like earlier George Jones better, I think, but not my favorite. Lovesick Blues is good. Um, but yes, right. Yeah, there's like it being part of like a minstrel act era is. Uh, it's a pretty song, I guess, but yeah, it's problematic. Um, I can't place Crazy Arms. Tennessee Artery Report is a really important one in my family. That was a favorite song of my grandfather's. And that it opens, I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. And he was born on December 21st of 1910. And so it was always like his personal anthem because he was born on the shortest day of the year. That's a good song. That's a great song. That's, that's probably definitely a top 10, maybe a top five country music. That is one of the coolest. I mean, if I was, if I was really like toxically masculine person, there's a line in this song that is, um, if you see me come, if you see, I can't sing as deep as Tennessee Army Port, let me try. <clears throat> if you see me coming, better step aside. A lot of men didn't, a lot of men died. One fist of iron, the other of steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Another day older. Um, El Paso is great. It's crazy, too, because it's a four minute song in an era where songs were like a minute and a half or two minutes. This used to be the song that if DJs, sorry, DJs, if DJs had to go to the bathroom, they would put on this song. Uh, it's good. El Paso is great. That's in my top. T that's probably in my top 20, maybe my top 10. Harbor Valley BTA, PTA, again, when I was talking about how I like, I mean, it's kind of a trope or a meme or whatever, but like the like um, empowered country uh woman singer i think harper valley pta is a really good example of that it's like very pop too like it's a good sort of pop country uh song it's it's great and it's a very like critical of the hypocrisy of straight-laced conservative america i guess it's great um no clue as you can see this song is uh guaranteed to be bad because of date mm-hmm Hmm. From Lubbock. Uh, I, I don't recognize that song. 2005. Kiss an Angel. Good morning. Charlie Pride. Man. Charlie Pride. I feel like. I feel like Charlie Pride does not get enough credit. Now. And it's a, maybe a slightly weird thing to say, but you know there was so much. Um, when Little Nas X did uh, Old Town Road, he got a lot of accolades which i think deservedly so for like this sort of like cross genre um attempt i mean the billy ray guest spot was maybe slightly questionable but hey i think it worked it's a good song but like to be a black country singer in the 60s and 70s i feel like um it's pretty astounding he also has a great voice it's also a great song uh Alan Jackson. Alan Jackson is part of the problem in terms of uh, country music being bad. I don't know that I necessarily know this song. Latin Scruggs. 
I think that is kind of bluegrassy. Maybe not. Folsom Prison Blues is a good song. That's that's that might be my favorite Johnny Cash song. It's a great song. Any if a, if a Johnny Cash song comes out of my mouth, there's a good chance it'll be Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, I don't know that I know Guitar Town. The Christian Life. Hmm. Is that the song that the... Oh, yeah. That's funny. So I've only heard... How funny. I thought that was a Graham Parsons song. I guess I've only heard the Birds version. Huh. I guess, I mean, it makes sense that it wasn't an original Bird song. Um, all time great. All time great. Boy, that's what a heartbreaking song. That's just a... Whew. That's a... It hurt my heart a little bit to think about it. This deserves to be much higher on the list. Unless the whole rest of the list is other Willie Nelson songs. But that's a... The funny thing about this song, though, I don't think he wrote this one. Yeah, Fred Rose wrote it. Which is, like... It's pretty amazing because Willie's songs that Willie wrote for other people were some of the biggest, their biggest hits, but one of his biggest hits was not written by him. It's an interesting thing. Billy Joe, Wabash Cannonball, Long Black Veil. This is a good one. I feel like the Johnny Cash one is maybe a little more canonical, but it's a good song. Lefty's a good name. I, I don't love this song. Yeah, it's just like going around an empty, sad house. This is a great song. This song is great. Bucker Owens and the Buckaroos, the Baker, Bakersfield Sound. Outstanding song. They're gonna put me in the movies. They're gonna make a big star out of me. The biggest fool that ever hit the big time. And all I gotta do is act naturally. That's a good one. Coal Miner's Daughter, great. Still not as good as Fist City. Towns Van Zandt. Um, this song's good. I like Waiting Around to Die is my favorite song by him. <laughs> More Graham Parsons. No clue. Okay, I, I know we didn't really mean to get caught up in all this, but here we are. Yeah, yeah, George Jones, Tammy Ryan. Just, I don't know. 70s country. Most 70s movie music is not my favorite music, just broadly. This is our first Hank song. That's kind of surprising. That's funny to see this. Bye Bye Love is a country song, huh? Huh. Yeah, country pop and R&B charts. I, I, I really don't even think of that. Carter Family, Wildwood Flower. Not a lot of people know this, but Ma Carter basically invented the solo electric guitar like uh, uh, or like solo like lead guitar maybe what we would call lead guitar in the 20th century uh i feel like ma carter is actually is actually the og because she had this crazy style uh porter wagner not my favorite I don't really think this should be that high up the list. I don't know that one right off. More Hank. Okay, good. It's good. We're trending the right way. This is Fran Young. This is great. This is a Willie song. I like Willie's version a lot, but I think the Farron Young version is maybe better. Yeah, this is... Oh, man. Jimmy Rogers. Um, the singing brakeman. Yeah, he's great. This song... Uh, uh, I think this is the one... Someone, there's a Beck album, Stereopathetic Soul Manure, and somebody sings part of this song. I think it's this one. Um, let's see, what does he sing? All around the water tower, just waiting for a train. A thousand miles from nowhere, just writing in the rain. I walked up to the brakeman just to give him a line of talk. You said if you got money, I'll see that you don't walk. Um, weird choice. Good song, but... Ring of Fire is great, but I don't know. It's one of those songs I've maybe I just heard it a few too many times. It's a very good song. Dixie Chicks. Dixie Chicks above Hank Williams. Eesh. Um, this song is great. 
take this job and shove it. I don't work here anymore. I realize I'm using kind of the same generic country music voice, but for all of these people, which is not really fair, but here we are. If you got the money, honey, I got the time. I think that's more commonly associated with Hank. I can't even really think of the lefty fizzle version. Our stub's good. More Carter family. That's good. That's a uh, June Carter was like one of the the kids in the Carter family who later was uh, married to Johnny Cash. Gambler's a great song. That is a great song. Uh, more Loretta. All My Exes Live in Texas is a great song. I would say there's a it's like right on the border of country music being bad. And it almost tips over the line. Like it almost tips into terrible late 90s, 2000s country music, but it's it's just a little bit too good. It's a little too good. Um, new San Antonio, huh? The new San Antonio Rose, huh? Wichita Lineman is a great one. That is a good song. I was just singing that. I feel like I was singing that yesterday or uh, no, I was singing on last time we streamed satisfactory. I think, um, that's a good one. More Hank. Huh? So, what was that? Sorry. Bloom. Okay. We're getting towards the top 10. Thanks for bearing with me. Except we're probably all gone. Blue Men of Kentucky is a good song. I've got a tiger by the tail. I get what they're trying to do, but Axe Naturally is a better song. Axe Naturally is a better song than Tiger by the Tail. Um, is this the one that was in Oh Brother? I don't think I've heard this version. Well, you probably shouldn't listen to it now. Okay, I have to listen to this. Hmm, interesting, okay. I mean, the, the version of No Brother is great. Willin and Waylon. Okay, finally we get some Waylon. We get some more Willie. That's a great song. It's a great song. Okay, if Willie Nelson on the road again is not in this list, I I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. If, uh, if no Randy Travis is on this list, what are we even doing? There's no Randy Travis. If um, Randy Travis too gone for too long, Jolene, again, it's good. It's not a top 10. It's good. The performance is great. But it's not, I don't think it's top 10. Probably top 20. Mama tried. Okay, this is something we can agree on. It's definitely in the top 10. I'd probably put it higher. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. Good song. Ray Charles. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. Okay, this actually, I, before when I maybe questioned Tammy Wynette, like, st I think I questioned Tammy Wynette, but Stand By Your Man is, is actually a great song. I still like the fiery songs more, but it is actually a, a beautiful song. Especially the, the Blues Brothers version. Oh, maybe this is the song I'm thinking of. The, the Water Tower one. No, I think that other one is Texas Yodel, so I'm not actually sure I know this song. He Stopped Loving Her Today is so gimmicky. Ah. I don't know. This this doesn't belong here. It's not a bad song. It doesn't belong here. It's just a gimmick. Who he stopped loving her today? Is it because there's some breakup? Is whatever, whatever? No, she's dead. She's dead. Spoiler alert, she's dead. This, yeah. This is the best Hank song. That's a great song. That's that's about as good as a country song gets. Written by Willie. That's a great song. Hmm. It's a good song. It is a good song. 
this list is trash. There's so much post-2000 garbage on here. No Randy Travis. Kidding me? I mean, I'm just... There's lots of glaring omissions, but at least of, like, going to do sort of latter-day people. I mean, <laughs> in the last 30 years, I guess. Um... Only one Waylon song with Willie. A couple Merle Haggard songs. No, no, no Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. Happy Trails? Happy Trails is not on there? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that was, that was more of a diversion. I meant to only look at the top ten, but... Uh, how could I not? How could I not look at them all? Okay, this is from the Tennessean, the hundred. I'll skip to the top. Let's see what the Tennessean has to say. Okay, okay, this is already a better list already because I saw islands in the stream. So at least we're at least we're serious here. At least we're actually. Is this not an order? Is this just a no order here? Alan Jackson. I think in my mind, Alan Jackson was, like, really the person that killed country music. Or he, like, you know, what's his face? The stupid, like, oh, which guy is it? The hyper jingoistic, like, we're going to stomp on your face with American boots guy. The post 9 11 song. That wasn't Alan Jackson. Who was that? I blocked his main from my, my, my mind. Islands in the stream. Okay. These people, at least, I can take them seriously. Don Williams. I'm just looking at people. Oh, wait. Did I mix up Jerry Reed with C.W. McCall? Maybe I did. I'm sorry. I think I meant Jerry Reed. Jerry Reed, I think, is who I meant for the the like um wait i thought that was jerry reed wait now i'm confused is he not he's the when you're hot you're hot guy is he not the convoy guy maybe i was mix mixing up he's pounded down and convoy okay i messed up i was wrong jerry reed is the When you're hot, you're hot, guy. Yeah. I blew it. I was wrong. I was wrong. Eastbound down and down. I was I was tying I was confusing in my mind eastbound and down and convoy. How embarrassing. King of the Road again. That's right. Mama's only your babies go up to the cowboys. That's a great song. A great song. Cattle Call, Eddie Arnold. Okay, again. I can take these people seriously. They've got some contemporary stuff. I'll put some Shania on there. That's not the best Shania song. The best Shania song is uh, No One Needs to Know, as we all know that. I, 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 yeah, that other list didn't have Shania. What? Okay, obviously I have a soft spot for this song. Not just because it's about my hometown, but because it is a legitimately good song. It's the best song about Amarillo. It's not the only song about Amarillo, but it is easily the best. Noticing a, a distinct lack of John Denver from here. Where's a uh, Thank God I'm a Country Boy? Rhinestone Cowboy. Oof. It's a good song. Yeah, David Allen Cole. This song was specifically written to be the perfect country song. Mm -hmm. Crazy. There's seen tons. Dwight Yoakam. I'll take... Yeah, I really like Dwight Yoakam a lot. Hank Jr., a.k.a. Bo Cephas. Not my absolute favorite, but he's he's got some good ones. Kenny... 
Oh, Mama tried. Okay, Randy Travis. This isn't the best Randy Travis song, but at least these people are sensible. Obviously, you need Randy Travis. Who? Don't know about that. Also, don't really know about this. I'm not a crazy, I'm not a huge fan of this particular supergroup. It's a pretty weird one. Um, yeah, not, not, not my favorite. I don't know. I like all of them individually, but somehow that, that little, that, that country supergroup never quite, never quite did it for me. Um, Katie Olson. Um, she's got a song called Rose Garden, right? Casey Olson. Isn't her, doesn't she sing Rose Garden? Because that's actually the best song. No, what is the song by KT Olsen that I like? There's a, there's definitely a KT Olsen song that I that I like, but maybe that's not who I'm thinking of. Lynn Anderson is the Rose Garden. So what is the KT Olsen? There's definitely a KT Olsen song that I like. It's not 80s ladies. Gosh, I even remember like that it was a, one of the first MP3s I, I had, I feel like, was a KT Olsen song. Maybe I think it's this version. It's her version of "You Call Everybody Darling." I think that's a. It's an old song. My mom always used to sing it, but I, I like the KT old version. You call everybody darling, and everybody calls you darling too. You don't know what you're saying. It's just a game you're playing. Um, this this. Ugh, tool bag. Look at that face. What a tool bag. Yes. Right? Isn't Toby Keith the, like... Right? Do I have that right? I want to make sure that I'm picking the right person. Um, yes, this courtesy of the red, white, and blue, the angry American. Like, ugh, this this was the moment that it's like, yes, you like country music is ruined. This this is probably the song. Um, country never never recovered. Country music never recovered to. Uh, to this if I'm thinking of the right song maybe I have it wrong I'm pretty sure this is it. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Anyway, anyway, that era, but. Mm -hmm. Is that the whole list? I don't know. Do I need to, maybe I need to make my own list. I really have to think about it because Kind of bad at doing this on the, off the cuff. Okay, obviously, we got a little distracted. I was supposed to be building a factory. Look how cool my factory looks at night. 
I've driven off both binary and Draclan because I started thinking too hard about country music. But you know, sometimes, sometimes you just have to think really hard about country music. So we want um. Okay, this is where we got to be careful. We need blue ornaments on one side and red on the other, but I think it's asymmetrical. So we need six smelters on the red side, but only five smelters on the blue side. Is that right? So we can just do the thing where the smelters feed into three foundries, three foundries. Yeah, I think this side only needs five smelters and one is at half capacity. Um, so how do we want to do that? Let's just... Smelters are pretty compact. And we want the smelters to feed out this way, right? So... Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one too many. There, we only we need six on this side, right? And which way did these go? Let's just go out. We left their butts hanging off. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay. And one, two, three, four, five, but one of these is half capacity. And these are all blue one ornaments, right? Is that right? Because we need four forty five is four point five, we need six to make thirty. I think this is correct. Okay, so these are all blue. These are all red. And these all need... These get trees. How's this possible? Do you need 20 gifts each? 10, 5, 10, oh wait, 10, 20, 30, 40, 45. Right? 45 blue ornaments. Oh, but do they take how many gifts? Five, yeah, five. So wait. Five. This, I screwed up somewhere.
45 blue ornaments, right? But it takes half the gifts. So it's really 5, 10, 15, 20. It's really 22.5. Oops. Twenty two point five, which is three, only three trees. So wait, no, 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 I'm sorry, only two trees. So it's two trees either way. I feel like I maybe got that wrong somewhere. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty. So I had two for there. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking over there. So I think but right, it's just three trees in both cases. I'm sorry, two trees to get 30, because trees are 15. Um, so. <laughs> you did? What did you, what did you learn? What did you learn about the history of recorded music? Now I want to listen to that version of I'm a Man of Constant Sorrow. A version of that in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? That's a great, that is a great song. The great version of a great song. I am a man of constant sorrow. I've seen trouble all my days. I bid farewell to old Kentucky, place where I was born and raised. A place where he was born and raised. Um, okay. So, the outs are there. So these are our ins. What? What just happened? It's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, especially in that regard, the origins in particular of that as such a uniquely American music. So, so of course, so much early. I don't know what the right term is, like broadly folk, like, like just passed around and repeated those, those early songs that don't even have an author, really. Um, Uh, a lot of that stuff is just, I'm, I'm sure so much of it is just lost to time. There's some really interesting uh, recordings of stuff from that era of people who were making an effort to try to capture, capture those things, that kind of like early, uniquely American music. And that's both uh, kind of country and Western and sort of Oh, I mean, lots of things in the in the traditions of the South. What are the or whatever the origins were from from slave plant plantations or or whatever other origins some of those folk songs had, like working and and then like working music, like like cowboy music and things like that. Or or it's not quite connected to ship music, I guess. Although there's a, there's certainly a realm of working music. I don't know what the term of that is. Um, I mean, a lot of it is not a pretty history, I guess I would, I would say. The music of laborers, especially the music of forced laborers is, there's like a complicated history there. Actually ran out of pipes. 
Yeah, I mean, there's 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 music. Uh, I actually think a lot of a, a lot of music history. I don't really have to think about this before I say it, but my instinct is to say a lot of or like a substantial. Uh, oh yeah, I'm trying to think of like the the sort of like um whatever the primordial soup of music is in humans and obviously there's there's paths that you trace back through sort of worship and ceremony and rituals and that's through all cultural cultures all across the world but i think there's a lot that is traced through like songs of labor like songs that are rhythmically rhythmically sung as you work that that kind of thing which now i, I guess like the music of ships is on my mind just because there's that that weird resurgence of sea shanties last year um but the, the united states being a place that loves forced labor has a, 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 a there's a lot of music in those traditions tied to slave plantations and tied to you know prison road gangs and things like that um and then those those contexts are so interesting because there's songs that predate the recording of music that were just like passed down and changed and handed around and the lyrics would change and there's a hundred different versions of them um midnight special is one that comes to, to mind the song the midnight special i think is almost untraceable in its uh its authorship if that's if that's the way that to, to put it or even just folk songs that were kind of passed around. Even like, uh, um, what was the one I was thinking of recently? Oh, Give Me a Home or the Buffalo Roam. I mean, that was, there is a, that's from a poem, but then that kind of split into, and that's that's more recent probably than some of the other things I'm talking about, but that split into all of these different folk, tradi folk versions with different lyrics. Um, And it's just so separate from this, like the the sort of parallel path of popular music and 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 music hall music and recorded music and radio music and um, things that required certain that, that that it was a privilege to have available to you, I guess. It, it just whether it was a live performance or a uh, later a recording, and I guess. Even even that's a case where the church was so so tied to it because I feel like especially in the South so much of the musical tradition was from like church church kind of gospel music and church ceremonies and singing at church and hymns and so much that's why so many early to mid century uh, country artists all have a gospel album I mean even Elvis has gospel albums like very it's just so part of the tradition of Southern music I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely speaking somewhat out of my depth. It's a thing I'm interested in, but I, I don't want to sound like I am an expert on this, obviously. Um, but it is something I think about. So we said we really only need two trees? Is that true? Oh my gosh, we can two. But there's even songs, I mean, more recently. What is that? Is that Smokey Robinson or Sam Cooke? The, well, don't you know that's the sound of the men working on the chain, chain game. So even into the 60s, there was kind of um, very, very clearly uh, prison inspired, if not of prison origin music, I guess. And I guess, I, I mean, that's a that's a weird, I don't know, it's such a complicated thing to talk about. Maybe weird's not the right way to say it, but essentially, like, even interesting sounds weird to say it. I don't know the right words to use, but the being this country and the way it is in the history, how often the forced labor music became very tied to gospel music. And I, I, I mean... There's so there's just so much gospel music that is that is basically the world is terrible and life is terrible. But I will, you know, one day I'll make it to the land of milk and honey. One one day I'm going home. One day one day I'll be in a place that isn't constant misery. Basically, um, 
is just such a part of that that tradition. I don't know. I actually just talking about it makes me realize that I obviously don't really know what I'm talking about, and uh, I would be, but I would be interested to to learn more. So I guess we could just steal these four trees, right? Because we're going to shift all production to over there. Just take all these trees. That's a thing, uh, oh yeah, sure. I think about that, that was such a thing. My my Methodist grandmother who played church at the, or sorry, played piano at the church and all the hymns she would practice and just, I, it, like almost without fail, they, they, were, they were, not every hymn, but a lot of hymns were, were kind of focused on, uh, this life's no good, but don't worry, you'll get rewarded in the next. Um, which I mean, if you're if you're, that is a very understandable perspective. If you are, yeah, there's lots of contexts in which that is a very understandable, a coping mechanism, I guess, as a way to think about. Oh no, I didn't do these in the center, but I did the other ones in the center. What a crisis. Okay, merger. Oh. Oops, that doesn't do anybody any good. It looks great though. Yeah, I, there's just, that whole world is so. I don't know. I don't. I don't even want to comment on it because it's such a complicated thing. But like, yeah, I shouldn't even complicate it on it. It's just I'm. I'm. The tone of of a lot of those those. Tone of a lot of that music that is tied very much to. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get my reward later. You know, or like, oh, it'll some some other day it'll be good or it'll be worth it or whatever. It's just there's a lot about that that is pretty pretty nuts. Okay, so this side is iron, I think. This side is copper. What a beautiful Christmas factory. How long have I spent on this? Two hours on this factory? There's not a lot of gospel music I like, actually, for as much as, like I was saying, for much as that is a, is a, is a staple of kind of early to mid 20th century country music and everybody had a gospel album. Um, gospel music. Broadly, not my jam. I'm sure, if I really thought about it, I could come up with some exceptions to that, but broadly, not my jam. I do that the the Christian life song. I haven't like trying to get into. I I have such a a probably unfair, but in I would say, not totally unjustified. Uh, perspective of most 70s music and so I've been kind of making an effort to fill out some blind spots and I think it's been worth it like I've been getting into Neil Young lately in a way that I never have before and uh, but even listening to the birds as kind of a precursor to Crosby, Stills, Nass and Young anyway and but there is this album that is that was with Graham Parsons that is a is a very country country focused music it's sweet sweetheart of the rodeo I think um and it's good, and there's a cover, and I didn't realize it, but it seems obvious now, a cover of that um, Christian Life song that's pretty, I guess, I guess pretty gospel-y. I guess that's where it would fall. And it's, I don't know, because it's performed by them against a counterculture backdrop, I think actually that was a sort of controversial at the time, like that, uh, whatever, these, these long hairs, these hippies were trying to make country music and they're making fun of us or what, whatever. I don't, I mean, I don't, 
I don't know the details of it, but my sense is, is that there was some controversy. But uh, it's a pretty good song. It's hard to it's hard for me to hear it, and given the people that it's from and not kind of I don't know hear hear a little bit of it hear it as a parody slightly maybe, which is maybe unfair, but that's just how how it sounds to my ears. Are you kidding me? Come on! Why is this stuff so fussy? So fussy! Oh yes, it's true. There's, yeah, right. There's, there's, uh... Plenty of hymns to make you uh, make you feel ashamed or bad about yourself. Or <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm sure. Just none are coming to mind. No, no, no hymns are coming to mind at the moment as uh, my jam, I guess. Should have made this a mark three. I will say I grew up. Um, I grew up Catholic, and I mean I would you know go to my grandmother's Methodist church sometimes with a much. It's just a very different tone, I guess. Like the, the like, Catholic liturgical hymns. Um, just if that's the right phrase to use. Different, different vibe. Uh, why is there no power down here? Okay. Okay, so I think copper goes one way. Iron goes the other. Can we just do this? Can we just, wait. Those are supposed to be splitters. I do it wrong all the time. Okay, iron is supposed to go this way, right? Right? I think so. That wasn't very nice. Really? Really? I don't want to go get steel just for one little... Come on! Go back and sneakily to change these to ones because who cares? Throughput is not really an issue with these. Hmm, interesting. An interesting way to think about it. I mean that's a that's not even a total I mean, that's not just purely an analogy too. I think private school is associated with Catholicism. Anyway, it, it, literally, it's not even purely a purely a metaphor. Okay, we have iron. Are we getting enough iron? Okay, that's actually a question because we got a lot of smelters here now. One of these. What's your problem? That should never happen. How could that have been short? Wait. I'm making 
30. Five, 10, 15, 20. It should just be 22.5. Don't these make 15 each? If not, I'm in trouble. Wait. 15. So how could that ever, how could that ever happen? How could this ever happen? How could we ever be short a gift? I guess it's because we're just, oh, I see. We're just building stacks, so that'll even out. Mm hmm Okay, so, so that's a little annoying. It'll just take a while for those. We could seed. We probably have enough. Uh, so the ingots look like they're going to be fine because it's 10 per minute, but we should at least be getting 30, if not 60. We are doing this. So I think we can kill this entire factory. I think this whole factory can go away. Am I brave enough to do it? I mean, there's a lot of storage, actually, so... That's weird. How could we be this backed up on... Whoa, how did this happen? Are you serious? We were short on trees here? We were throttled by the stupid trees? Um, the funny thing is I probably... Am, yeah, like, this, these were not... Um, I have until Christmas, I think, to make 500 of these, so we didn't really need to be a whole, build a whole giant factory, but on the other hand, of course we needed to build a whole giant factory. Obviously. Well, you already know that the right faith to choose for now is, is uh, uh, Temple OS, right? You just need to... Hmm... Where's our throughput problems? These should be two per minute, two per minute, one per minute. These are operating at 100%. Two, one, and two. Each of these operating at 100%. So how? That should be five. So how is it possible that we're short here? This is impossible. Unless I forgot to hook something up. How is that possible? That should never happen. Right? Am I reading this incorrectly? Two per minute. That's three. That's five per minute. And we're getting five per minute. Maybe it was just buffering, still like easing through the system. Hopefully these are just... I mean, we can seed all those. So I'm going to just delete all the factories over here, and then we'll figure out what to do with... Oh, boy. Church of the Subgenius is still a thing? Wow. That's kind of nice. I was thinking, uh, recently reminded that I am an ordained minister in the Universal Life Church, which I think I learned about from the TV show Taxi from the 70s, and I think the Universal Life Church is from the 60s. Um, in fact, I think weirdly I got an email not too long ago from the Universal Life Church reminding me that 20 years ago I uh, signed up to be an ordained minister, so. Okay. We have so many presents. Yeah, Church of the Subgenius. I mean, I that I mean that that's funny because there was so much early internet stuff. I'm trying to think of even what my first exposure was. It must have been X Screensaver. Right? That must have been my first um In fact, I think I was looking at X Screensaver recently, recommending it as reference for a project, and I want to say the Church of the Subgenius. Uh yeah, visited link. Um, I want to say that it was retired. Was 
Was it just called Bob? Oh, maybe the the retired. Okay, here's the retired ones. I wonder. I yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, I'm not just imagining this. Oh, here it is. Okay, here it is. So this was maybe my very first, maybe my very first um, exposure. But it was retired. It was moved from the X screen saver distribution as a version 5.08. I wonder if that was an ideological remover, mo removal by JWZ. Um, I was actually pointing to it for a very specific visual style. In, in fact, it's come up recently um, for, uh, yeah, I, I, I was using it more for visual reference of a very certain aesthetic of a time of place and was kind of, every time I check, I'm always delighted that he's still actively working on it. So I think the first screensaver, I don't know if these are chronological. They're not, they're alphabetical. I think the first one is 1992. 1991. No, that's the article. I think I want to say 1992 was the first version. So X Screensaver is now 30 years old, but he's still adding to it. Um, so 2021, this one was from last year. JWZ is such an interesting person. Yeah, I mean, I, I. Haven't looked at. I'm sure I did at the time because I was trying to develop for X11, but I haven't really looked at the code um, for a long time. I think sometimes I'm interested in it. One, just as sort of like simple recommendations for things to try, as like try to do this in processing as like a an early processing assignment. Some of it, some of it is like my reference point for a certain kind of algorithm, or like like if there's some algorithm. I might only know about it through X screensaver and I have to go remind myself of it. But also there's just, I don't know, there's an overall aesthetic and a time and a time and place kind of thing. Um, he's so interesting, JWZ. I don't know if you know very much about him as a person and his history, but it's such an interesting, um, a very interesting life. And I think lots of things that are just sort of like core. I mean, yeah, he's responsible for a lot of things with the early, the early ish internet, as far as like early popularized, widely spread internet. Um, also some very <clears throat> kind of canonical phrases in computer science, I think are attributable to him. Um, there's one in particular that I really like. Yeah, this is probably his his uh, most well known statement. I mean, it's been it's been re expressed a million different ways, but this is one of his his all time great quotes. Yes, Linux is only free if your time has no value. Yeah, he's got some good ones. Um, every program seems to expand to go read mail. That was also him. Um, I think he is the person. Uh, he also maybe semi takes responsibility for inventing the idea of hypertext email. I think that was kind of his fault, possibly. He doesn't seem to be totally sure. X keycaps. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Linux is only for your time, that's no values. Pretty good. Um, I think he's I think he's all on Mac OS now. I want to th I want to say he's just fully embraced Mac OS.
there's... It is so weird to me how Pearl has kind of been wiped off the map. I mean, it felt like for a while Pearl was a substantial thing. Like, I feel like I heard about Pearl very frequently. Pearl was just a thing that came up. I didn't use Pearl very much, but it was just a thing that came up a lot. But I guess Pearl's place in the world feels, at least to me, like totally erased by Python. Although I guess early Pearl, I mean, early on, Pearl was very often weirdly... I mean, I don't even know what to call it. Like CGI bin kind of stuff. Like um, dynamic web stuff was frequently Pearl, but man. That just feels so gone. Yeah, I just never got in to Pearl. I don't know why. Maybe by the time I was thinking about it, there were just other things. I don't know why. I don't really know why. Yeah, and, and, and so the, even the, the era that I was running, it was a long time ago, but running Linux as my primary desktop operating system or all the Linux machines I've administered. I ran into Perl constantly, of course, because there were tons of Perl scripts to do a ton of different things. Early CGI bin, like I want my website to have a dynamic counter or something. I wrote a little bit of Perl then, but it was never my, like, I never thought in Perl. You know, I had to edit, I've edited plenty of Perl scripts, but... <clears throat> I've never thought in Perl the way I think in other languages. Okay, what are we doing? We're just destroying this factory, right? And losing our ability to fly because this game hates fun and never wants me to fly. And all I want to do is fly. <clears throat> always be flying. I want to always be flying. And this game is like, nah. I know you've played this game for 150 hours, but it's not enough. Okay, are we actually under... I think if we just do this... Then we will be okay. I gotta go get more. It's just kind of amazing to me. I don't know. It was one of those things that it didn't feel in my mind. And this is just because, again, I didn't really use Pearl or think of Pearl a lot. But it really feels like a thing that just was a, like, de facto language. Like, a core language. Like, it was just a, yeah, kind of, like, synonymous with Linux in some ways. And then one day it was just gone. It was just, we don't. We don't we don't do that anymore. We don't think about that anymore. And I think it was one of those things that I just it was really relatively recently I realized like I haven't heard anyone talk about Pearl in what feels like two years or something. I just haven't I don't know what happened. I I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like Pearl was part of the world and then it wasn't. And I don't know what to do other than blame Python. In my mind Python took that that place. DBA team still pearls it. Do they use pearl as a verb? Um, I don't need this stuff, this much stuff in my inventory, but also don't want to bother to go throw it away. So it's a real, it's a real dilemma. I want those. <clears throat> I just want to go take some of the stuff and hand seed some of these things. There's no real reason to do that other than none. There's no reason to do that. I was going to make some kind of excuse, but the reality is there's no actual reason to do that. Build more power lines so I can try to fly a little more. Are you? Are we having similar problems? These seem pretty buffered up. Okay, this one isn't quite. <clears throat> Road is over here. Have fun. Copper. I got a lot of these. Have fun. Take this. Knock yourself out. Got a lot of blue. Knock yourself out. I 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's like where I'm from, everything's a Coke. Any any soft drink in Texas is a Coke. I don't mind that. That 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 is actually a a silly Texas thing that I that I do find somewhat charming. Really no reason for me to be this precious with this stuff, but you know, we still got Oh boy, if we gotta do something about those assemblers. It's just those things in the upper right, by the time I just had this feeling that by the time I could optimize them, it would take so much time to do what really needs to be done to optimize that production. It will just be done anyway. Like it will take so much time to do it right that the bad way that is currently running will just be uh, enough. I'm sure that's somebody's law. Oh, JWZ has some law, I think, that is attributed to him. I can't remember which one. Some some software law, I think, is attributed to him. Maybe it is, maybe the regular expression saying some people raise it like a law sometimes. Okay. How is this possible? Okay, we needed to fill this one up. <clears throat> I mean, even this, taking so much time on this one is, this is absurd. Okay, so this one just actually isn't hooked up. So that would explain, I don't know how I managed that. I guess because these were asymmetrical. I don't know. Don't know what I was doing. But this is supposed to be a merger. Okay, so that would that would explain any shortage of uh, Christmas trees we might have been experiencing. Although it still seems somehow like we're not short at all. So, am I overproducing Christmas trees or am I underproducing something else? Okay, these still are probably a problem, but I do hope it is just this. Doesn't seem like it though, it seems like this is really not good. So these we have six, yeah we only need 30. I guess it's because we're using the exact right amount. We, do, we should have just built a couple extra trees, right? Like there's no reason not to. Um, but now that I've hand buffered them, I guess it doesn't matter. That one's still short somehow. Well. Whatever. Went to the beach, I saw Kiki. She was like, ooh, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Because this is my United States of whatever. And this is my United States of oh, whatever. That's a good song. Okay, do we need any of this stuff? I don't think so. I've got an uh, Eddie Arnold song stuck in my head, Cattle Call. Okay, no yodeling. 
that the neighbors should not be exposed to yodeling at 9.30 p.m. It's just, it's not a, not a neighborly thing to do, you know? Or maybe they should be. Maybe that is a neighborly thing to do. Maybe they need more yodeling in their life. Maybe everybody needs a little more yodeling. Maybe the world would be a nicer place if we all just yodeled a little more. If you can't get the daughter, get the yodel leg. It's a problem. If you, I feel like you, you, like yodeling just does not work at a reasonable volume. I think if you're gonna yodel, you gotta like you gotta commit. You can't. Uh, there's no half measures with yodeling. I think. I think it's uh, it's just one of those things. You gotta you gotta kind of go all out. Okay, well, you know. We didn't need to do that, but here we are. We've got a whole bunch of extra presents and stuff over there. I didn't even use some of the things. I've been just so focused on the grind that I didn't even make, like, this. there's a snow machine. We can make a fun snow machine. Didn't even do it. Should probably make a snow machine just because we can. Um... Let's just, let's just forget it. Those are not going to make that much of a difference. That's important, though. It's true. I see, and that, the, 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 like, throw, the break, the, like, break that makes a yodel yodel. <clears throat> that, that cry break. That is that is universal to all human cultures. That like a break in the voice in a sad song. Just one of the things that makes a sad song a sad song. One of the things that makes a, a good country song a good country song, especially a good Hank Williams song. That's that's what, that's the key to, uh, I'm so lonesome I could cry. That's the real. I'm so lonesome I could cry. Hear that lonesome whippoorwill. Sounds too blue to die. The means he's lost his will to live. I'm so lonesome I could cry. Did you ever see a night so long? And time goes crawling by. The midnight train is winding low. I'm so lonesome I could cry. That's a good one. Probably the best Hank song. I'm gonna see. yeah, I think it is. There's a tear in my beers. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, we wanted to try to Did we finish all these? I don't think we did. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a it's a stage whisper. Okay, these seem to be doing well, but let's just, let's just make sure we'll all pull up just for kicks. Really make sure our Christmas, uh, whatever, our Christmas star production, my reward better be great. Better be incredible. Okay, I think we've we've done the thing. There is a little bit of snow around these. I guess they emit snow or something does. Maybe it's the Christmas trees. But and just to get get in the holiday spirit. I think we should uh
Try to build some snow machines. Anything else good we want to build? The electric lights were kind of cool. I don't know. I don't really build much of this stuff. So, yeah, snow dispenser from walls and ceilings. Wreath can be attached to walls. Pretty. I don't feel like that's that great of a bonus, you know, because there's wreaths on every single light pole just for free. So, well, let's see the snow dispensers. Let's see how it goes. We probably only need one. Let's see. Let's see what happens. We should have all this stuff. And one of these buckets over here. We need some candy canes. We need some actual snow. And we need. Well, those are expensive. I'm gonna waste my fixmas decorations. Okay, I guess we have a bunch in here. Actually, should we take some of the expensive stuff? This one. Okay. Merry Christmas. I mean, Merry Fixmas. Snow dispenser. I hope this is so fun. <gasps> wow. Well. I guess it does the thing. Well, what happens after the holiday event is over? Does all this stuff just vanish? Okay, what did you need for the holiday wreath? We'll just make two holiday wreaths. The tree looks nice over there. What are we making one star per minute? It's gonna take a while, but I mean, we we have till Christmas, so. Well, this is not a bad little Christmas factory, right? It turned out okay. I wish those trees lit up. A little disappointed that those trees don't light up, but at least that tree does. I feel like I should have gotten a tier true. There should have been a tier two tree, tier two, tier two tree. Um, I'm gonna say this was not a very good reward because I have a trillion of them already on lamp posts that I got for free, but. Okay. We made an actual snowman. We have these everywhere. Which in this picture, it looks like it's illuminated at the bottom, but oh well. We didn't really add any of these anywhere, but the ornaments are kind of expensive, so eh. Maybe we call it. Maybe we call it a day. We made some of our slow, steady progress. Okay, let's go check on stuff. Hopefully if there was... Okay, the, yeah, it looks bad. Possibly bad. I don't remember what factory that is, but there's a triple set of assemblers there. Okay. No, that's okay, because they're all actually done. What's our efficiency here? 100%. 100. 100. 100. So I think we did make up for the... Uh... <laughs> yeah. I would could be kind of into that if all the trees were uh, all the trees burst into flames. Okay, seems like we're okay here. This does look like a bit of a concern though. The the crystal. Why was that so slow? Forty five a minute. Still at one hundred percent efficiency. It does make me just want to upgrade those conveyors though. And they're Mark three. It's forty five a minute. But we have a hundred, so I guess it's I guess it's fine. I mean, it's thirty-six per batch, so I think we're I think it's actually fine. Okay, so this seem okay. Um, I feel like I broke the computer supply chain somehow. So that's good. So as long as okay, well, we're not we're in bad shape. 
in terrible shape, in fact. Yes, this is bad. That's bad. We're short on something critical. So we've, like, halted production on our... There's so many supercomputers, so it's these. We're being throttled by these, and it's this freaking automated wiring that I just redid. We need... Um, what? 33.75, but how... What are we short on? We have lots of stators. Oh, we probably... Is it our wire? No. I thought it was going to be our wire. Ah, it's high-speed connectors. And we have zero. So, I mean, sure. So how many do we actually need? We need 1.875. But some of these are overclocked, right? Or at least one is. Ugh. Thirty-seven and a half. So four of those means seventy-five. Seven point five. Seventy-seven point five high-speed connectors a minute. Um, call it two. Let's call it eight. So we need eight-ish high-speed connectors a minute. And there's no way we're making that many. It's very that's very pagan of you. Like a like a like a tree burning ritual? Are we gonna get into some kind of tree burning ritual? Okay, so the high speed connectors I think about that a lot. Um, the notion okay, this is a silly thing to say, but let's just say it anyway, because why not? Um, this notion of uh, you know, the old complaints that are, yeah, Fox News loves to stoke is like the war on Christmas stuff. And the absolute this is the thing I heard so much here in Texas, still here, heard of my whole life is like the notion of Xmas being like, oh, well, Xmas, they're trying to take the Christ out of Christmas, which one is absurd. One, because X is from the Greek character Kai, the beginning of Christ, and has been used as like a symbol for Christ as long as there's been Christ. And I've heard my family say this, who would go to Catholic mass where there were big flags with an X and an R for Kai Ro as like shorthand for Christ. So like X has always meant Christ, basically. Um, so one, it's still, it's still, it's not Xmas. It's, it's like X is shorthand for Christ. And so that part's absurd. But the part that actually bothers me on like a, a, a whatever long-term anthropological stick scale is that just like with Easter, most of the rites and rituals and traditions and whatever associated with it way predate Christianity. Um, like so much of Christmas is still just Yule, like weird like our weird pagan decorate a tree stuff is all Yule. Um, just like so much of Easter, which we still use Easter from Esther, uh, fertility goddess. When in the context of a fertility celebration, oh yes, because it's around the first day of spring and that's why we have eggs. And so we have rabbits, like these symbols of fertility Christ has nothing to do with that. Christ was injected into that. It should be removed. We should go back to our cool pagan celebrations. All of our cool, weird Christmas traditions that are mostly Yule traditions anyway, um, are weird like pagan tree worship <laughs> like rituals. Get Christ out of there. He, he just, I mean, I will admit it was a good marketing move, obviously, by early Christians to just piggyback on uh, already existing, already popular holidays. Like, I'll give you that. That was that was smart. Um, but uh, should we really do the math here, or do we just do this? 
I think eight is sufficient. It's a little overkill. Let's just have whatever. Let's just max it out because I think we have, I think we have the stuff to do it. I mean, we're clearly fully buffered here. So this is a little bit of a concern. Oh, okay. This is not going to fly. I don't think we could do this. That's too much. We can't even, maybe we can find this and get a stack of, uh, Five, five hundred. I'm just trying to hit five hundred quick wire because that's as much as we could reasonably hold. I mean, whatever. We don't need to. Let's try to max it out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, right, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's such a weird... And, and, of course, like, there's so much evidence of, like, early Christian temples that, oh, surprise, actually, this was built on top of an existing pagan temple that predated it by who knows how long. Um, like, all the stuff with... <laughs> I don't know. Easter, in particular, is so absurd. Uh, and, I mean, yeah, gosh... Is it, what a weird coincidence. What a weird coincidence that Easter just happened to happen was was scheduled basically to align with um, uh, the rebirth of Christ. It was kind of scheduled to align with already existing fertility celebrations that were associated with rebirth already and had been since antiquity because it's springtime. And oh, how weird that uh, Jesus' birthday, I'm sorry, Jesus' death, did I say birth? I mean, Jesus' rebirth, his, his um, resurrection, just happened to align with the, seeds, the, the traditions of birth and fertility. And oh, how weird how, even though I think biblical scholarship puts Jesus' birthday in the summertime, um, that we celebrate it at the, during the winter solstice, basically, uh, our weird, our weird moon, our weird sun and moon rituals fo focused on strange uh, tree-related rituals. Uh, and I believe a lot of Yule was focused on Odin, Woden, and the Wild Hunt, and avoiding, of course, the Wild Hunt uh, from from hunting you down and uh, destroying you. I don't know. Uh, all, all, all. Mythology associated with Odin is a little confused to me. I just don't know that much about it because sometimes it's like, oh yes, he's the wise seer and he's like the cloaked figure with the one clear eye and maybe that's not even him. Um, but then he's also the figure associated with uh, berserker rage. <laughs> he's like a pretty, uh, pretty calm dude until he drinks the berserker juice. And then a little less calm, I guess. Okay, so hopefully that overclock. What is underserved here? That's hard to believe. What is this factory making? The factory is making circuit boards and it is underserved. Oh, well, that's my own fault. Did I just. Wait, did we just... What is this? This is just AI limiters. I don't even know what we're doing with AI limiters right now. They had to go somewhere. Wait, what are we doing with AI limiters right now? The answer might be nothing. So that can be about dead ends. Are they part of this? Wait, what are these doing? So there's that path that totally dead ends, and there's this path that just goes into this buffer. Okay, wait, there's a path here. I see. We, so the, we're not making these for no reason. We have two giant buffers of them. 
So, you know, maybe we don't actually need that many. But that's siphoning off at least some. Not a whole lot, though. 25 per minute of our copper. Oh, I thought we were pretty good on that copper sheet, but I guess we're not. Huh. Yeah, but the audience of its time is... I don't know. That's 2,000 years ago. Go back to it. Strip away all the stuff we don't need anymore. All the cool stuff was already there. All the stuff people like about... I mean, maybe not all of it, but a lot of the cool stuff people already like about um, these, these co-opted pagan holidays. You don't need the additional fluff. You don't need the guilt. You don't need the weird story where... Yeah, whatever. It's pretty good. We need some good um, pagan Christmas music. It was already good. Okay, what? So are we having problems serving what? Are we having problems serving... Is it the quick wire? No, it's cable again. I mean, we didn't really need to make eight of these. I mean, nine. So if we can make eight and uh, do okay with the cable, then... Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, that seems okay. Well, I mean, early, yeah, I, there's, I, oh, whatever. I have lots of thoughts on, like, the origin of religion, especially early religions, because they were extremely tied to day-to-day -to -day life. Like, the invention of religion was, was, was a, like, a practical invention. It was a, it was a pretty practical, I mean, it, it makes sense it, from, from the standpoint of, like, okay, we're, we're, like, coming up with civilization, we're coming up with, like, the ways we structure our lives and societies and so on. And we're coming up with like material solutions for a lot of the problems we have, but we have this whole realm of problems that are not addressable. That could be bad. Uh-oh. We need those radio control units. Uh-oh. We have a whole realm of problems that are not addressable with practical solutions, like people that you love die or your crops need to survive and so yeah it makes total sense that you're going to sacrifice uh you're going to invent religion as a way to have agency over things you have no no agency over so if it's like okay i planted my crops i can't really do anything but if it doesn't rain we're all going to die so i could just sit here or i could invent a system by which i have agency because then i just have to go sacrifice the right animals to the right god and then it will rain, and it's great. Like, I've, I have created a, a space in which to give myself agency. And the same thing of, like, you know, death is not a problem. We still don't have a solution for that. And so it makes a lot of sense to uh, invent a framework in which you have agency to say, like, okay, well, I don't really... Like, death is not a thing that I have material mechanical control over in real life, but I can invent a framework in which I have control over it to say like, oh, I have to meet these parameters for these rewards in the afterlife. And so like, it's actually, I mean, whatever, this is my own weird worldview, but I think it's, it was a pretty practical invention. Like religion was a pretty practical invention. And it just happened to also be um, a very practical way during early civilization to administer laws because you could say, you know, not only will we punish you now, but you, 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 you could be punished for all eternity as well. Or, you know, if you don't do the right thing in the right way, um, locusts will come eat all our crops and everyone will die and everyone you love will die, not just you and so on and so forth. So it was a very effective uh, legislative tool, government tool. I, I, not really legislative tool, I guess. I mean, kind of, right? Like early legislation was founded on um, the the principle that uh, 
you have to adhere to these things because if you don't, a wrathful god will will punish you. So like, yeah, it's, it was a very practical invention at that time, but we still have most of those same problems. So it makes sense that those inventions continue. Like we still have this problem of as much as we want to pretend that maybe isn't true, a huge part of our existence is totally out of our control and out of the realm of anything we have agency to deal with. So it doesn't make total sense to me that we're still inventing these things. It makes sense that we would not still invent even in recent memory. We would invent um, Mormonism and we would invent Scientology. Like, they're, I guess, just the modern interpretations. There's nothing... Nothing in Scientology is any more absurd than is uh, what goes on in the Book of Mormon. And really, nothing in the Book of Mormon is really any more absurd than what goes on in the Old Testament. So we maybe just have broadly less tolerance for those things, the, the more, uh, the, the nearer the, 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 the historical proximity, I guess. Oh, I like that. Like, we're going to go. Um... It is a social contract, but it also is a. It's funny, actually, that you mentioned the, the Ten Commandments specifically, which one, the Ten Commandments are not canonical, and every religious tradition has their own set of them. Because it's not like the Bible says, these are the Ten Commandments, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, they're introduced, and then where you draw the line in the scripture is. Yeah, different traditions have totally different ways to draw it. And that's not something I realized till later in life. It's funny, I think Wikipedia actually has a good, um, shows you a chart of what religious traditions, uh, and I think it's something I noticed as a kid and thought I was just mistaken because my, like I mentioned, my immediate family upbringing was Catholic. And so I was raised with these 10 commandments where covet thy neighbor's house um, and covered by thy neighbor's other stuff were grouped together. Um, no gods before me engrave an image and I'm Lord thy God. Those were all grouped together. So this tradition of Ten Commandments is different when I would go to my grandma's house, the Methodist, and her Ten Commandments, um, I guess would be these. I'd have to really look at them and match them up. Um, probably in this realm, but where these, where you have like these three covets are wrapped together instead, and you break uh, no other gods before me and graven image are broken into two separate commandments. Um, anyway, I don't know. That's the thing that not a lot of people seem to realize. This one in particular is funny. The Samaritan one, where the tenth commandment is, oh, you'll just put these rocks up. You're just going to stack these rocks somewhere. Uh, which is a very good commandment. I like that one. So the notion of saying the Ten Commandments is somewhat not nonsensical. I mean, unless you're going to go straight to the Talmud and be like, yeah. You can kind of say that is canonical. I think it's fair to say the Talmud is canonical, but Christians don't. Uh, Christians don't like that because in the Talmud, God is a jerk all the time. So especially lots of rel like re more recent translations of the Bible really soften God to make him seem like less of a jerk. But that is a, that is one thing I've always liked about Judaism is there's like not a lot of illusions about God not being a jerk. And so in, in, uh, in pretty direct translations, as best as I understand, I, I don't read Hebrew, so I have no, I've relied only on translations, but. I don't read Hebrew, I don't, I don't, I don't anything Hebrew. I, that almost sounded like, oh, I don't read it, but I can speak it. Like, no, I don't. I have nothing beyond the most passing from, uh, familiarity. 
Okay, well, maybe that solved some problems. We're at least up to 1,800 of those, but it is a worry. I mean, I hope what we did is going to fix things. It might take a while for it to filter through. Yeah. That's a tough one. It really would be nice to overproduce, but the way we split these is really not. I mean, it should technically be correct, I guess, the way we split these, where it'll go. Is that enough? Eight actually isn't enough. No, it's 7.5. No, I think it is. 7.5 and then another. We just can't go above a number that um, that we can't supply enough cable with. Shalom. Um, we were talking about how we're going to remove the Christ from Christmas and go back to its pagan origins. and celebrate the, the true meaning of Christmas, uh, the true meaning of Yule, which is to not be hunted down by Woden and the Wild Hunt. I think. Oh man, we're like a little bit off here. Shoot, that's okay, that's too much. Yeah, you, you'd almost, it's almost a requirement, I think. I, I, it's, it's very easy to believe in, um, I mean, I don't know. I think, so, I, I have a very specific view of the trajectory of humans, and it's not even an optimistic view. There's no value judgment. And it's hard to talk about it because almost any, any language you use around that has an implication of like a value judgment. So if I say like, um, human progress and use the word progress that implies value judgment and i don't want to i just think there's a trajectory and i want to say whether that trajectory is up or down but there's a trajectory that homo sapiens sapiens has seemingly always followed from the beginning and i believe they will continue to um and that is that we we love to invent things uh whose purpose is to address certain limitations of our biology and death is one of those limitations. And so inventing religion as a way to cope with death and to cope with other contexts in which we don't have actual agency, I think makes total sense. I think it's a great invention um, in, that, in that context. I think it's a totally, it makes total sense. Like, just like we invented things like truth and justice and art and poetry and agriculture and uh, sky rise buildings and helicopters and high speed trains and whatever else we invented. I think it, I think it is a reasonable invention, but you know, sometimes inventions are. So we're still underserved on, underserved on cable, even with our double cable source, which is a little hard to believe. Because we seem to have an embarrassment of cable. So is this some stupid thing where we're literally, okay, we have so much cable. So how is this even possible? It's just that our conveyor belt is too slow, is the actual answer. So let's just give ourselves embarrassingly fast conveyor belts for all of these things so that we don't even have to think about it. So that was the actual problem. We actually have plenty of stuff, so we really probably can hit 9 per minute. We just were... That's a very silly problem. Yeah, I mean, I really think, I mean, that's a, that's an interesting thing, because as soon as you, when we actually achieve the goal, and again, even goal sounds a little bit like a value judgment. I'll say, like, if human if humans ever finish their project, which is the project of humanity, in my opinion, is to transcend all limitations of their own biology, which means everything we do. Like, humans can't walk very far, so let's have... Uh, shoes and wheels and horses and high-speed trains and supersonic jets or humans have to eat food so let's 
let's let's gather, let's hunt, let's have agriculture, let's have fertilizer, let's have genetically modified fruits, let's have factory farms. Like anytime there's a thing that we are born with as a limitation, like our it is we are very quick to find ways to try to transcend that. Um, and that's for ideological and emotional and philosophical limitations too. But the the thing is, is that I believe we're on this trajectory to address all of those things. But the thing is that I think is interesting is if we ever actually complete that project, we it, it will be almost by definition, like it will be a speciation speciation event. Um, if Homo sapiens sapiens Homo sapiens sapiens ever completes its project the end result of the completion of that project will be we're not homo sapiens sapiens anymore, which I think is interesting. Um, I don't know what happens after that. Hopefully there's a, I mean, in my mind, it's a war between the pure humans and the, uh, the humans that have transcended through uh, being gen genetically modified and the humans that have transcended through uh, biomechanical augmentation. So it'll be the gene spliced people versus the pure blood humans versus the uh the cyborgs and i hope to see that war in my lifetime and i, I do I, I think there's a term for this but hopefully that's the end of the world because it's always good to die with the end of the world because then you know you're not missing out on anything if the world is ending and you die it'll be like yeah if i had lived anyway it wouldn't have been that good because the world is ending so it's not that big of a problem. But if you die and the world continue can use after after you, you know, you have to there's some FOMO you have to deal with. Okay, I feel like we're okay on these high speed spike I feel like we're okay on these high speed connectors, but I do think we're a bit behind now. But I think the way we have these buffered we should catch up. Although that just does not seem to be true. We are overproducing, so why are we? We're a very slightly overclocked here, but not by very much. Because even if we called this a three, it would be two, four, six, and three, and nine, and we're making nine. So I don't quite understand the problem. Making more than nine, in fact. We seem to be doing okay. That's true. I didn't even I didn't even include that. Actually, actually, that is another category. Even so, we've got like cyborg team. We've got gene splice team. Um, we've got pure human, and we, you're probably right that we will have like uh, uh, the transcendent team. The, the team that won't care because they've uploaded their brains to the perfect uh, perfect simulation anyway. Um, I liked that arc of the story. It's not exactly the same, but that brings to mind the arc of the game Soma. That game had a really good story, and I think it ended in a really interesting place and did a good job um, addressing that kind of digital transcendence. Uh, okay, let's just speed these up. Oh, 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 shoot. I'm going to look in here and be upset. Yeah, dang it. Okay, well, right. So what can we do about this? Let's just do this. Let's do this. This is, I'm, I don't know. I feel like I, sometimes I think I feel like it's, I have a strategy figured out for this game, and sometimes I feel like I just do not. But this, um, well, that's weird. How'd that get in there? This machine on? Yeah. I was buffering here, which is good. But I was buffering upstream on only one chain, so we were like, okay. So there's a couple things we have to address. Actually, we probably really are underproducing, because um, I forgot about this, and it's overclocked. So we actually, oh yeah, this is horrible.
call it needing call it needing 15 16 so we, we actually really are under we may be overproducing supercomputers let's check on that um, okay well cute. right this that's what I was alluding to earlier like this is this is not the way I build factories now where I just have stuff arbitrarily splitting I try to be more aware of of that when I'm doing it so that I'm not doing what I just did like just had a huge sink for these and they were being wasted but they were just like it was just kind of a sink of a sink for a a critical resource that should not have been sunk yeah I don't know I used to be I used to think just for kicks, just because I like, I, I tend to like the underdog in the story. I used to think I'd be pure team human. Um, as I've gotten older and my body has just really seems to want to fail in new and exciting ways, I, uh, I don't know. You said re reconsidering that a little bit, re reconsidering my, my stance. But I don't know. I really am stubborn, and I, I really do like uh, do like an underdog story. So I may stay. I may stay human just for that. Or uh, only allow very homebrew. <laughs> homebrew mods. Okay, so this is actually terrible, and there's no way we can serve both of those with this so the supercomputer situation is actually interesting because we do have the possibility of we have an alternate supercomputer recipe that we could switch to so we're 2.25 is what we're making currently let's see how many we actually need because i think these like directive doodads are um no i don't know yeah you got to be careful where you stick your consciousness that is that is true Okay, I have a glut of supercomputers. So that's maybe good news. Did I say I was making 2.5 or 2.25? We actually need... Okay, well, we actually need 2.25. We have a glut at the moment, but that would, that would go away. We do have the option of flipping on now. Actually, now that this other factory that uses. Hmm, OK. I have an alternate computer recipe. It does require your radios. Which require crystal oscillators. So we could flip this on and get three per minute. Easy peasy. So let's do this, 2.25. Let's use these. And that makes me a bit worried about this, but it seems like we're, it looks like we're doing quite well with crystal oscillators, like these. But that's only because we've been backed up on other things, so it's a little hard to tell. Um, but I think we can just turn off that other supercomputer factory because it takes way more resources. Ben, I have a recommendation for you for this game that I kind of wish I had done earlier. <clears throat> that that uh, maybe you've already done, but if you haven't, it might be useful advice for you, which is to very frequently go around the map and just get as many hard drives as you can. Like yesterday, I went around and found like 12 hard drives, and there were some extremely critical recipes that would have been very helpful to have early on. And I just did the like telephone pole all, all over the map so I could navigate the map really quickly. So, um, okay, let's do this. Let's not buffer these. That means all of our production of this is going to go to here. Um, then that does make me worry about our computer output. These are both making make computers making crystal loss. Okay. Wait, how did this happen? 
Didn't I just say we had an embarrassment of crystal oscillators and now we're short? That that happened. <laughs> okay, wait. Did I break something? What? How are we so... Okay. So crystal oscillators are clearly a problem. How many crystal oscillators do we need? I think we actually need fewer computers than we're making here because one of these computer belts, I'm almost positive, was just for the supercomputer factory. So if that factory is offline, let's ditch this. It would appear that we're com creating way more computers than we need. So we actually only need uh, uh, 4.5 computers per minute. Okay, we're waking way too many computers. Because I had some of those going. I think that's true. I hope that's actually true. Did those computers get used anywhere else? I don't think... Wait. <clears throat> Okay, hang on. I think... Shoot. What did I just delete? It was from here to here. Uh, okay, I think I just done the bad. What is this middle path for? Is this middle path for computers? I should probably label these. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, it really will change. And it's, there's been a few times where I've been able to say, like, okay, I can, like, retrofit whatever factory X, Y, or Z to use. Um, okay, shoot. I do need computers coming this way. So one point, I need another 1.25 computers coming this way. What is with all these crystal oscillators? Okay, they get used. Why are we doing this stuff? What are we doing here? Oh, I forgot I switched to crystal oscillators from motors. Okay. Um, so I need another 1.25 computers. Yeah, so in some cases, like, the, whatever, I forgot what it was, the advanced wiring or whatever it is, I was able to retrofit those without too much fuss, but then, like, of course, the whole production infrastructure feeding those was wrong or imbalanced, if not wrong. Okay, so we said 2.5, so let's add another, how do we make this, 3.25? And then we do need uh, this. So I have a glut of computers here, but that's really only because we were underserved by automated wiring, but that seems to be doing okay. Looks pretty close though. But I have that, I think that I have that perfectly balanced. Yeah. Or nearly perfectly balanced. Okay, so that seems okay. But the crystal oscillators look like they're gonna be a problem. So now we need 2.5 there, two here. So we need 4.5 crystal oscillators a minute. There. Wait, you found a recipe that gave you six inventory slots? I wonder if I've gotten that one. I feel like I'm short. Like, it looks like I'm seven inventory slots short from making this layout perfectly or no i am six short maybe i am maybe that's what i'm missing okay i forgot what number i said 4.5 right and we're maxed out making 7.5 and it looks like we're kind of tight eh, maybe not actually it looks like we've even even at this with three fully overclocked manufacturers we seem to be okay maybe we have enough what is actually using these at the moment this is so we said 
So 5.75 spoken for. And I mean, motors, it seems like we're very okay on at the moment. So I was so behind on motors until I got this new motor recipe. And now I just have an embarrassment of motors, the infinite motors. But this would be um, whatever, whatever it is, 3.75, another 3.75. So I think we are a little short, but I think we have so much backed up that uh, we'll see. I mean, we still have so many more. So I don't know what to do. We could fuss with this forever trying to tune it. It seems okay at the moment, but I still feel like it's not perfectly balanced. Like once we, once things rebalance and we clear out all those motors, for example, then we're gonna be short on crystal oscillators again. And um, the biggest thing is I would really like to overclock these, but everything is like so precariously balanced right now that I can't because like. <clears throat> to over were I to overclock these, then I would have to overclock that supercomputer creation, which I forgot which recipe I'm using. That one might be okay, but the radio controls doubling that would kill our crystal oscillators. And those factories are all maxed, but I guess we could build some more manufacturers for those. Um, but I think then we would become constrained by some of the things needed to make those. This would immediately be a constraint, and we just went through so much just to get enough automated wiring. And if we get the automated wiring, if we try to double that production, we would have, what's its face, those um, high-speed connectors, so yeah. But we're not even halfway there on that one, which is disheartening. I mean, we're not even halfway there on two of these. At least, I mean, the nuclear, or whatever it is, the pasta is very slow, but it's perfectly balanced, at least at the moment, though now this kind of worries me. But I just turned on radio control unit production again, so. Wait, what are you making? Oh, the supercomputers. I don't know. You might be constrained on these. Constrained on these. Sorry, 6.75. I don't think we're making enough of those. 6.75. This, at least, we have a huge buffer, but it won't last forever. 6.75. 8.75 is what we should be targeting. Yeah, I don't know. I do fear that I... In switching to a lot of simplified recipes that use crystal oscillators, it, it, it definitely simplified things, so that's good. But um, now I have a potentially a huge bottleneck here and some of this stuff. I mean, maybe I got a new recipe for plate. I didn't take it. There were some new recipes from plate, but I just stuck with the stitched. Wait, where is it? That's weird. Oh, wait. Yeah, this. Sorry. This. This stitched plate. I feel like we're okay on crystal. We could go bump those up. Bump up the miners. Stuff like that. That could be okay. Cable seems okay. Plate seems okay. So we probably really could just get away with making another... I mean probably pushing my power grid again too. Oh man, getting all nuclear power set up is such a such a fiasco. Okay. We're doing fine on power at the moment. Um I think we should just do it because we are we've got enough stuff. I actually just hate trying to supply manufacturers though.
the conveyor belts just don't work well for it. And because these containers are already full, they'd be a pain to take out of the equation. And if I split only one of these, then they will get an imbalanced distribution of stuff. I think I see a way that I could do it. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be pretty. Like doing the routing per manufacturers just kind of sucks. But let's build one more of those and then probably we call it. So the thing about the waste is you should be scared, but it's worth it. Like each nuclear reactor is uh, 2.5 gigawatts and the waste stacks for a really long time. Um, like if you have industrial containers, like three, I, I forget what the numbers are, but it's something like one industrial container of waste will uh, take 40 hours to fill or something like that. I, I, it's, it's some, maybe it's 20 hours, but it's like many hours to fill. And so I have two reactors with Right now, just three industrial containers. But I want to go and overclock both reactors and just build a ton of containers. The problem is, is I think there is a, um, well, I think that is bad that I didn't really factor for that probably will end up biting me is uh, the sphere of radioactivity. So the, the, as far as I understand how the mechanic works, the greater a concentration of radioactive material you have in one place, like say three giant industrial containers full of tons of waste, there's a sphere of radioactivity that grows. And I put mine under a mountain in a cave, but I'm guessing that the game was not written so that um, the cave would block the radioactivity. And I have pretty important bases on the land above the cave. And so I'm afraid that after some hours, I will try to go to some of those factories and they will be totally contaminated. But I guess we'll see. How could I do this in a way that doesn't suck? Is there any way to do this in a way that doesn't suck? I mean, the answer is kind of no. But in theory, you could you could find a safe place to just kind of store it forever. Like I haven't even it was such a pain to it was such an immense pain just to get that production going that I haven't even looked at plutonium. I haven't even considered it. What am I making? Actually. Did I get any new crystal oscillator recipes? No, I think I turned it down because this one was already all set up for. Oops. Okay, well, that was easy. Okay, what is the nearest. I can have a stack of splitters and still safely get into like can i still do it like on the line still doesn't really work because that makes this too close yeah it's just not a great way to do this i don't like it Just let me fly. I just, just please, just let me fly. Okay. So. 
I don't think it's really worth the trouble. To try to split them properly where they all four get the right amount, that just seems too annoying. I think we just split this one. Feels like the most. That means these get, you know, one half of one half of one third instead of a quarter. I'm just trying to see if there's a way that doesn't suck. But I don't think I could put this one right here. Maybe I could. I don't know. Whatever. Let's just try it. My expectation is that it will be annoying. And I should know better. I should just always leave... I mean, I kind of thought I was, but I still wasn't enough. Just always leave way too much room behind manufacturers just because it takes so much space to route them. If you're going to have more than three. Okay. So, what we really would like, like the ideal situation, which is probably not going to be the situation that actually works well, but I think the ideal would kind of be that we'd have splitters. Um, that's really probably closer than is reasonable. But let's just try. Let's say we could get right on this line. So the line that goes right here and divides these two, it would come in that way. Let's see if it works. I don't have a lot of confidence, but let's see if it works. Okay. That was promising at least, but this is where it falls apart because I can already see it's going to fall apart. So I shouldn't even have done that because I should have known that this wouldn't work. Um, maybe there's some really goofball... Yeah, I mean, I could do this and like try to turn it around or something. I've done that. I've ended up doing that before just because it's so finicky and annoying. Or do something like this. Uh, let's see. I just let it collide because it's too annoying. Um, no, this doesn't work. This, that's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. Wait. Okay, I did... I My original thinking was correct. And then I kind of lost sight of what I was doing. The correct thing is... the We want splitters here. And those really can just sit right here. Maybe. We'll see if I can actually get them in. I think it'll be okay. That one's obviously fine. This one, not so much. That one, not so much. But I think it's maybe one... Maybe we can finagle it. If we do something silly. The top one is the one that's going to be the challenge. But you could maybe, you know, maybe imagine we do something like this. Oops. Come on! Okay, not pretty, but we're just going to have tons of whatever. Intersecting geometry, but at least we'll get the job done. So this is the one that is actually a problem. I don't even really know what to do about it. Um, Cause the really dumb thing about this game is in the routing of these things, there's things that should technically be valid if it if I would let me place it to raise it. Because it's a two step process. You have to place the thing and then you can raise the thing up. And there's, there's cases where it actually would be valid if it would let me raise it. Um, but at least in that case, I could do it backwards. So that is very attractive. We've made a very attractive... Uh, we created a very attractive situation here. 
And so now these should just go straight across, and it's going to be an intersecting nightmare of geometry, but... It should get stuff where it wants to go, I guess. What do I have a lot of? Let's at least get this stuff. This may not actually be fast enough, but how much? Because we need, well, 45. OK, so maybe that's OK, 45. Because that is 270. So it, it would be 270 for all of those. And then so um, 135. Yeah, so I think we're fine. OK, so hopefully you're happy. This is very beautiful interchange. I'm gonna go ahead and speed these up. It's crimped from my style. Wait, that was the wrong ones. Who's emailing me at this hour? I should stop streaming soon. Let's just get this dump factory going and then stop streaming. How are those going? Looks good. Those are at least green lights over there, it would appear. So that's good news for now. And then pasta's doing pasta stuff. Okay. So we have this beautiful mess. We'll just create another beautiful mess over here. Of a similar, uh, similar design. And this one will be even more. I mean, this one won't be as crowded, at least, I guess. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Maybe that would have been a better idea, but I'm going to stick with the plan. Okay, um... Okie dokie, and this is already hooked up to merge there. Not pretty, but what are you complaining about? And then let's overclock the hell out of this. Just go nuts with this. We may not really need to, but I'm just worried that that's going to be overwhelming. And that's that's really what bothers me about this. The way this. You know, my home base factory is so entangled and so intertwined that it really is hard to... The, the, the standalone factories I've been building recently, everything is, like, metered perfectly. Um, perfectly load balanced from end to end. Or attempts to be, at least. Uh, not so with the original, original home. But, okay, we'll kick that off. Let it... Let her rip. We're sending oscillators to three places, which is kind of a concern, but hopefully... I don't know why we have such fast layers for the, over here, but let's do it. Okay, so that seems all okay. See how our Christmas factory is looking good. Let me fly, just let me fly, game. Just let me fly. Just make up a reason that in the late game I can fly. Jetpack upgrade. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How is this possible? Ninety percent efficiency. It was short. How could this be? Did I get the number wrong? Six, 12, 15, that's what I said, right? 
15, 15 ornaments. So it's you. What's your problem? Copper ornaments. And but these are. Okay, what did we say here? That's just straight up three assemblers. So we need 15 copper ornaments. The copper? It is. Okay. What is what did I do? What did I do incorrectly? For copper ornaments, we need 15. Maybe I didn't do the math correctly, right? 15. These produce five per minute, five, 10, 15. We're short on red. So we need, so the foundries, it was just straight up three full foundries. We need 10, 20, 30 red ornaments. These factories produce five per minute. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, What, what could be wrong? How could we, how could we be short? Unless we're short on copper? Wait, that couldn't be true. Are we short on gifts? But it's, we, it's six times five, it's 30, and these are two, so that should be 15. So how, yeah, these are all fully stacked. This one isn't somehow, inexplicably. Oh, this is the whole problem. OK, problem solved. I missed connecting one conveyor belt. Kind of wish it would, like, I don't know, sound an alarm or something when I did stuff like that. I guess it's, yeah, this was probably yellow, and I just didn't see it. OK, well. That's annoying. So maybe we could just grab a bunch of reds and coppers and try to seed it. That's too bad. I think we probably have a bunch of copper. Oh, come on. Well, I should not have I should not have those in my pocket, but oh well. Um okay. Okay. What a sad story. Our whole Christmas pipeline was was compromised. So that was operating ninety one percent. Ninety one, ninety nine, zero out of hundred, great. Well, hopefully this evens out now. I mean, of course, it would make total sense if at the very, we're near the very head of the whole pipeline. We are missing a conveyor belt. Then, yeah, I get it. Okay. We got about 150. Okay. Good grief. I don't know what to do next, really. I mean, part of me just wants to sit on this and let it go. I guess the next thing to do is get that other particle accelerator online, but I feel like we'd probably have to double our nuclear. Nuclear. Hmm. 
nu, q, lar, nuclear. Beautiful sunrise. Okay, well... I feel like I should be able to fly as high as I want when I'm next to this tower, right? I feel like I should... There should be no limits. That's a fancy view. Sword in hand, I gave... Chainsaw in hand, I gazed over my dominion. I like that because it kind of looks like roller coasters. Reminds me of the, uh, the Texas Tornado at Wonderland Park in Amarillo, Texas. So, yeah, let's call it. Let's call it a day. And then, then what? I don't know. Then what? I feel like we're almost done with this game and I can have some peace in my life. I mean, at least for now, until they add more, which hopefully won't be for a year. Uh, what am I going to do when they add phase five and these things that I can barely make one of? Of course they will. I'll be like, that's awesome. Now, make 12,000. But that's the, that's the name of the game. Make 12,000. Okay, I guess I'm going to say we're going to... Double nuke. I said that before, but I didn't do it. Actually, I did, because I built two, but now I want to overclock. I want to overclock them both, so. Wait, uses the coffee cup? Just, like, in their hand? I've never actually used it. I kind of forgot that I had it. In fact, I bought it and then just left it in the, um... Ah, yes. Oh, but you can't... Wait, did it just make a sound of it hitting my glass headset over my glass helmet? Oh, that's funny. When I first pressed it, I thought it made a, like, thunk. Very nice. What was the thunk sound that I heard? Okay, the coffee cup is, is pretty cute. Uh, the coffee cup has no alt fire, though, so... Not good enough. Okay, friends. Draclin, Binary, Ben, thanks for stopping. Bye. Um, I'll have to do some, like, actual work work tomorrow. I don't want to do that. Kyle! Wait! Were you here the whole time, or did you just decide to show up right as I'm ending the stream? Were you lurking like a bandit, or did you say something and I missed it? What a creep. Creeping around like a little creepy creep. Well, Kyle. Wow, it's like the whole gang was here, except... For a life is yours. Who just it's too cool to hang out with me, even though I made my wall pur purple just for him. Even though life is yours was like the only person mentioned by name in my Twitch year in review, but whatever. I guess I guess I see how things goes. Well, Kyle, thank you for joining me for, for ten minutes. Um, maybe we'll stream some more tomorrow. I don't know. I gotta get this game out of my life. I've played way too much of this. It's too much. It's too much. Okay, bye.